some of it. Yeah, there's some dockets here. Hi, everybody. Welcome. Hello. Special Sunday edition. It's Sunday. I, I was busy yesterday. I had a couple of personal things to do, and then in the meantime, in between all of those, I was doing Pokemon Go Fest. So it was sort of like, it was actually a really stre like stressful but fun day, running between like, okay, I've got to like, you know, go do some stuff over here if I want to participate in the Pokemon Go thing, which I really like, and then, oh, I've got to run over here to do this thing here, and then that thing there, and then I can go back to it, kind of things like that, you know. Mm -hmm. So it ended up being like a very long day, very long day, but it was fun. But I knew I was going to be busy at least a bunch of that day. So, yes. We're here tonight. Yes. Um, I did get a docket of interesting topics. Um, and I do have a different discussion topic, I think, has come up enough in our games and stuff, and in my own games, like, where I've run it or played in it, that I understand it pretty well and we can talk about it. And that's going to be, uh, it's going to be a fun one. Concepts and builds, when they work, when they fail. Because those come, that comes up more than you'd think. Yeah. Um, I looked over Dominaria. The Dominaria. I have it. <laughs> I, I first, what I did is I read through the quotations because I kind of want to pick up what they're doing mm -hmm. for the story. And honestly, it's okay. Um, it's not as bad as it seems, but it kind of is. I think the idea is uh, summarizing it. Uh, Sheldred gets sent to Dominaria. Um, there's a person in the Florian Academy that works with her uh, to basically build up a force. They were looking for some things to help Phyrexia in the multiverse kind of stuff. Uh, but she took the initiative of infiltrating a bunch of the countries and making a second war. Uh, the war, honestly, it sounds like it doesn't go well for them, but they kind of like win by getting a certain number of things. Like Apparently they kidnap Karn. Mm. You know, it's stuff like that. So that might lead into why they have to do weird time travel shenanigans in the next set. I don't know. I just, I'm just I don't know. That. That, I don't really care about Phyrexian nonsense anymore. <sighs> Again, yeah, it's just... It's not terrible, it's just not great, honestly. You know? And... It, it's it's just they've done the same type of thing before I think is why it's like I'm going to take for an example here <clears throat> Eldrazi on um, Innistrad hmm. there was a lot of corrupting beings to more unearthly things that serve a dark purpose <laughs> let's see what's happening here corrupting things to more unearthly things to serve a dark purpose. Nice, yeah. It's the exact same thing. Instead of becoming alien Cthulhu monsters, you're becoming like bio-cybernetic like Borg. It's the same yeah. kind of thing going on? I mean, like, at this point, I don't know if I necessarily care about um, storylines that maybe don't take place in weird planes. Mm. It's like, I don't know, the most interested I've been in the storyline for like a while was the little Kamigawa storyline that happened. Oh yeah, the Kamigawa storyline was good. Um, I think the New Capenna storyline was okay. It was yeah. interesting, it was different. Um, I think there's been plenty of other one-off planes that have been pretty good. Even revisiting ones, you know, like, mm -hmm. I think the, the, uh, the... <clears throat> The Dominaria, the just Dominaria set that they had, the storyline there, I thought was fine. I used a shit ton of it in Children of Wrath, because I thought mm -hmm. that was some that was some decent storytelling in that one, you yeah. know, like revisiting the plane. And, you know, Dominaria is pretty simple, but it was fine. Um, there are plenty of other good storylines they can do. I feel like they're just really bad at their big epic storylines. Yeah, because, like, even. Um even though War of the Spark was like not like not bad I still felt it was kind of a little weaker than some of the one-off stuff because you can do a little more with one-offs yes you can include your signature characters introduce a few new ones like uh, it's like the, the, the planeswalker of the week you know from our normal group visits mm. this plane we get to meet two new planeswalkers or something or like you know one new one one 
rarely returns one. Here's a storyline yeah. related to this plane that's kind of interesting. Bang, you're done. Like, I also kind of just want more weird stuff. Like, like the Wandering Empress is weird. Wandering Empress. She's weird. I want more weird stuff like that. Yeah. Or she's a planeswalker who can't control where she goes or when she goes. I want that. That's cool. Rex is not that cool. Yeah. It's because a lot of stuff like that's been done before. I think, and that's why it's not necessarily cool. Um, it's... Rex, it can be cool, and it was cool when it was first done. And I just, but it's yeah. been too long. It's been too long, and they homogenized it too yeah. much. Like, honestly, it should have been less a planar problem and more like, you know, it, it, it could have been rather than like, the, the idea that when they made New Phyrexia United, they ruined it. Mm -hmm. If they made, like, certain groups start to learn to go out, so, like, maybe then, like, if they find something like Minions of Sheldred on Dominaria, they're just Minions of Sheldred. They're just that group. Mm -hmm. yep. Or, like, one of the other groups, you know, it's, it's tr they're trying to, like, you know, spread out and, like, spread their doctrines individually to other planes or something. That still makes them a plane or a threat that says you have to come back to it, but it makes it more interesting because that way, different concepts within it instead of just the, mm -hmm. uh, we are Phyrexian and we're all Phyrexian, you know? Yeah. The idea, like, you got rid of the coolest concept from Scars, which was manned Phyrexians, and now they're just feel, oops, all black mana again. Yeah. And I think that's what the biggest problem I have with it is, definitely. It just, it, it's fine. Like, I, it, I, the storyline is, it's fine. It's not great, it's fine. Um, the cards, eh, there's actually some neat cards in there, I'm going to admit. I looked through some of the cards, yeah. like the rares and, and mythics, and I'm like, I a couple of them I said, I could, I, it, if I ever got one of these, I know some decks I own that I could fit those into. And that's always usually a good thing. I like it when I can do that that's and fair. be like, you know, that's a cool card, I like that. Nothing felt super overpowered either so I think that's also good on the surface you know yeah obviously I haven't done a deep dive in the way these all the cards do and also like <clears throat> sometimes interactions work differently than you think you know so yeah um yeah you come up with some ridiculous combos that just there, there's some combos that are pretty broken like the 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 technical infinite mana uh, generation that exists as one of the druid cards. Don't oh, look. I, I, I enjoy good infinite combo when you <clears throat> fill it out and uh, push it out. And most of them are not easy to do, but they're fun. No, they're not either easy to do. Yeah, and I think that's the point. A lot of them. The, the easier the infinite combo, the worse it is. If it's a difficult infinite combo, then you know, it's kind of like half worth it to try to do. <laughs> you know. Um, I have a, a friend of the uh, channel, Blaze, he still owns, he's a time warp deck. And the point of it is, he's built it so he can get infinite turns. I, and then when he has infinite turns, he can, uh, you know, slowly use capsize, which is the return a permanent to its owner's mm -hmm. hand with buyback, to return everything to your hand, and then he just has, like, three actual damaging creatures. And so it's like, well, you don't have anything to cast anything ever again so I'm just gonna, you know slowly swing it <laughs> when you have infinite turns yeah uh, anyway so I, I think my I think my assessment, because I wasn't giving it a fair shot last week is it seems like an okay set it's not great it's not the worst sets that I've seen by far, I've definitely seen some bad sets recently Cough, cough. The previous two Innistrads were not great, in my opinion. No, they weren't. Um, they kind of, like, burned a lot of Innistrad boat there by making such a weird, stupid storylines. But this one, you know, I would say it kind of falls in that middle ground of just hit average. Um, it's fine. Uh, but, um, so, yeah. If you are, anybody in, out there is interested in, I will link the card image gallery here. I don't know if it's everything yet, but it's most of it. I might give it a look. Let's, let's see some of these cards. 
again, like, uh, I think the going to the um, multicolored, the, they've got legends which are uncommon legends again, which I'm really mm -hmm. a fan of. I think those are where some of the better ones are. Some of these, um, what are they called? <coughs> oh, the defilers are <coughs> actually neat. They're like weird, they're supposed to be Phyrexian things, but they have like special abilities that are actually like, mm -hmm. some of them are interesting. Some of them. <laughs> Uh, yeah. You know, but, uh, it's it's not terrible. I certainly like. Uh, there's definitely things I pointed out here. Like, um, where is it here? A lot of kicker cards, huh? Well, I, that's a bit of thing for Dominari sets. Um, oh, Leaf Crown Visionaries for like they have they have some tribal stuff that's really good. Like Leaf Crown Visionary was good for El uh, and Green was good for Elf decks. I looked at that, and I'm like, oh, yeah, that's actually really good for my, like, elf deck and stuff. So they did some pretty good stuff for some tribal things here, I think. Um, oh, and their Squee card that they put out in this one, terrible. It's just awful. What's it called? Squee Dubious Monarch. It is the worst Squee card out of all the Squee cards. Uh, <laughs> it's not great, no. No. It's kind of just terrible. I was just like... Kind of bad, yeah. Yeah, I was like, wow, that's just... This is bad. <clears throat> Sorry, man. This is, this is bad. There, there are better cards than these, like, uncommon legends that are neater, that have a, better abilities. Uh, just saying. Also, uh, Joda in the multicolor. I got honest. I have a legend deck that I would throw that into, like, There's No Tomorrow, because it's just... It's so good for my legends deck. <laughs> God damn it. Uh, my legends deck, it's not really great. The new Johnny's like fine. Yeah, I just. <sighs> Hurrah, he's a Phyrexian now, whatever. Yeah, he's like okay mechanically. I don't. Poison counters are just like. <clears throat> I, I yeah. only use those if like. I actually am playing like from things from like uh, the Scars block. I have some Scars decks. If I bring them out, you know there's some poison counters coming because it's got some infect stuff. Uh, other than that, I don't usually play with a lot of that stuff. It's fine. Uh, why don't we just move on, honestly, from... Yeah, they're it's like, fine. cards are fine. Yeah. We got, uh, some RPG stuff, and we'll start with, uh, Hell Incorporated. Uh, so it's funded. Right. They only needed $306. They hit their funding for nice. four days. Um, it's basically like, you know, uh, they're Hell's a corporation, you're working for it kind of thing, an RPG version of it, um, which I guess means you're doing like, uh, doing underworld bureaucracy and stuff like that. Um, All right. Yeah, fair enough. So it's kind of like a weird game. It's supposed to be comedic. You know, that's the thing is, it's so unusual as an RPG. I think that's why I kind of like yeah. put it here. I mean, you know, if you're interested in comedy games, it's good to check out. Uh, uh, comedy RPGs are fine. It's yeah. not easy to run. N n I think next to horror, comedy is the hardest. Yeah, I think comedy is, like, a little too hard because it's so subjective. Yeah. Ah... Uh. That's a topic for another day now I've just introduced. The comedy slash silly RPG. That'll be a topic to talk about. I still have on this list of uh, topics for deeper discussion horror. Uh, and I gotta be honest, horror is a little easier. Because even if you're not scared, most people recognize when something is scary. Yeah. You know? Comedy. Much more subjective. Um, so anyway, if it's your kind of comedy, go ahead and check it out. Um, let us about something other RPG related. Did that print out correctly? No, it didn't. I did not copy. It hates me. It hates me. It does. Mm. There we go. Uh, another Kickstarter product. Riddles. A book of riddles. Riddles? Yeah. Puzzles and riddles for tabletop. I gotta admit, this is something I personally really don't mind because 
I'm bad at puzzles and riddles. Riddles, it's something that comes up in every game. You know, there's always going to be, eventually you're going to have to solve a puzzle, right? Eventually you're going to have to do a riddle. Mm -hmm. um, they can be hard to come up with, so, you know, resources for them are pretty good. Because even if you don't use them directly, it can give you some ideas to how to, like, yeah. make your own, certainly. I've definitely done my share of puzzles, and then I usually don't do too many of them because I see um, that a lot of my players don't understand the puzzles. Look, I I will always remember I had a puzzle where the um, the answer was like if you did this certain thing, um, it would give you a temporary immunity to fire, and then you were mm -hmm. supposed to like jump into this pillar of fire mm -hmm. as like a test. But it was supposed to be like, not only were you supposed to, now you could just jump into the pillar of fire, and if you survive, you're fine too. Mm -hmm. But the object is, you don't have to, you, you have to have faith, not just, you know, faith that won't burn you alive, you know, and the commitment. You also have the faith that like, what you've done will protect you. Mm -hmm. And all I remember is the one character stripped naked and jumped in the fire. Alright, you know, fair enough. <laughs> I mean, they solved the puzzle, but I was like, eh, it's the way to do it. <laughs> it's not some way to do it. You're, you're on fire. It hurts a lot. Yeah, I mean, like, there's the. the what is, I, I threw, you know, I, th I threw a dumb puzzle at you in uh, the Cyberpunk game, you know, and no one really got it. I, well, one person got it, but they figured it out in, like, a jokey way, which was, was the solution, but not to that, not to the extreme of cutting off your arm and offering that. Yeah, no arm severing, at least this time. Yeah. Um, but having guides for puzzles and stuff is really nice. Yeah, it's a good um, resource that I would recommend, like, you know... And especially this one, because it's made for RPGs, yeah. which is, is good. Like, because a book of riddles or puzzles, it's fine to help out if you need some ideas, mm -hmm. but it might not fit very well into a game. Some yeah. Of mine. Uh, so that's funded, 14 days to go. Uh, definitely one of those resources that I'm like, oh, that looks like a really nice resource to suggest. Yeah. Um, so. All right. And when all else fails, just give them a riddle from The Hobbit. If you feed me, I grow. If you give me a drink, I die. What am I? God. That is a familiar one, but I'm not remembering it off the top of my head. I've heard that riddle before. <sighs> Can't remember. Can't I'm pretty remember. sure this is one from The Hobbit. It probably is one from The Hobbit. I have not read The Hobbit in a while. Uh, I, it's also another thing I haven't seen for a while. <sighs> I'm trying to think of it. Uh, There's fire? There's the answer fire? Yeah, it's fire. You, throw, you, you can't really put water on a fire? Yeah, it's fire. That's right. Well, you, you can, depending on what kind of fire. It might be a bad idea. <laughs> well, those are chemical fires that are completely yeah. different, and then you're just dealing with something else. Uh, okay, cool. One of us remembered it, at least. Um, this was Don't put water on an oil fire, chat. It's bad. <laughs> yeah. Get an extinguisher. So, uh, oh, this is a little RPG in like a, a, a zine, as they would call it, because they have it, the word zine here, zine quest for. Uh, it's Bone Bout, a skeletal boxing game. Oh. It's actually like a tabletop RPG where you're playing as skeletons in a in boxing tournament. Fair enough. <laughs> I mean, it's so... Weird? It's a weird one, but <laughs> I respect it. <laughs> I think that's what drew me to like talk about it. It's like, that's weird. Now this one only has 64 hours to go. That's not a very long amount of time. Um, uh, so like, it's the idea that like you're involved in a tournament uh, and you're skeletons, but there's also like a mystery afoot, you know, things like that. Uh, you know, so it's, it's made to have more layers than just, you know, uh, your boxing and stuff. But, you know, that's a thing, too. Um, so. Um, yeah. Uh, so you can have, like, different types of haymakers. Uh, and apparently you can try to sneak illegal items into the ring. Uh, things like that. 
and there's uh, different rules for things outside the ring between bouts and stuff like that. So, I mean, they seem to have a bit of a system now. It's not, like, huge. But probably for, like, small one-off or small, small like, adventures, it probably wouldn't be bad. Usually that's the kind of thing that you do with uh, games like this. They um, tend to be very uh, short and sweet kind of games. So, it's interesting looking. Uh, and then we got some one more RPG thing before we move on to some other tabletop based things. We got um, uh, Dr. Gord Wart's Scientific Vent Adventure Violence. That's the title. <laughs> <clears throat> yes. Uh, so it's it's a book. It's a five E book with intemperate space explorers, uh, pipe puffing imperialists, dotty freedom fighters, rocket fueled missionaries, and mad scientists. Mm -hmm. um, it's very the retro futuristic, like fifties sci fi. Yeah. It, it rem at least some of these screenshots remind me of. Uh, what the hell was that game that came out like kind of recently? Space Capitalism, the video game. Is that, that Outer Wilds or there's another one? That Outer. Might, that might not be Outer Wilds. There's another Outer one Wilds, I think, is like the, the time loop game. Yeah, there's another one that sounds like that. Yeah, Outer World? It might be Outer Worlds. Is this Outer Worlds? Outer Worlds. Yes, Outer Worlds. Okay, that's the one I was thinking of. They sound similar, so I get them mixed up sometimes. They also came out at like the same time. Yes, which really just makes my small name recognition based poor name recognition ba recognition based brain broken a lot um, it's, a, it's a fun look and fun uh, style yeah um, honestly we don't see a lot of style this sci-fi anymore anyway so it's nice to see something on it because you know it went out of style by like the 60s or 70s a lot yeah. of, but, you know people realize sci-fi when it look or the future wouldn't look like this quite with weird jetpack yeah you know sci-fi altered with our um concept of what the future might be so and i like uh i like the character sheet corporate's interplanetary adventure license it's pretty fun yeah i mean it's the idea that's a little like silly and fun and yep. I think um, that's good um, uh, and, and a lot and there's a bunch of classes which are kind of like a little bit more they say like reskins of them uh, and others have uh, they've taken the base classes and either altered them significantly or just reskinned them a little bit to make them work and I think that's a good idea that's, yeah yeah I like that Paladin is called a tub thumper. <laughs> uh, uh, the barbarians are jack and apes. <laughs> God. Uh, there, there's some good names. Uh, Wizards of Boffin. <laughs> I do like yeah, that. That makes sense, yeah. yeah evangelical engineer. Mm -hmm. It's it's some good uh, naming, and and I, they have some nice like art here for like some really ridiculous silly stuff, you know that they kind of all show. Yeah. Uh, so I I know it's also like the idea that like uh, all the magic's just weird science basically. So you know it's you know weird bizarre uh, bizarre rifles apparatuses chemicals or Martian technology. Uh, so, it's it's an interesting take that allows you to still do a lot of the, like, you know, magic stuff, but, like, you know, just be yeah. like, it's science! And not all be, uh, artificers. So. True. Okay. Um, so that one's also funded. But, uh, today is the day of a lot of Kickstarters, so we have one more board game-based Kickstarter. Board game. I don't know, a board game here. Let me just throw this link here into chat of a post-apocalyptic uh, game here. Uh, barbaric. Um, so it's choose your rider and gear and build endless combos to survive against gigantic monsters. Hmm. 
It's a cooperative post-apocalyptic uh, board game. Um, Fair. Uh, where you're like super smart animal mutants in the distant future when humans have died off. It's a furry board game. It is a furry board game. That's a sh that's a go like a goldfish submarine spaceship. Yes. It's a goldfish robot. What the fuck? Uh-huh. And there's a chicken man. There's a chicken man, please. Yeah, there's rat, rat boy. Uh-huh. And giant, like, horrible snake monster, giant turtle monster, you know. Uh, the horrible, gigantic wasp, hippo, hippo lady with an afro, and a machine, and a, and a, and a chain gun. <laughs> uh, you know what? Fair enough. <laughs> it's... It's an interesting art style and an interesting idea. It's combining a lot here for like a like a cooperative miniatures board game. Yeah. Uh, I, oh, so here's what it is. It looks like you've, you've got like you've got like a vehicle uh, token and you put a little character token on top of it that must like hook together or something. Okay. Um, so like you you have your your character and they can go on one of the. Um, various vehicles they also have uh, provided. Um, and they got uh, big old monsters. And they're only one, uh, the only one I see right here is the uh, their weird lizardy creature and its minions. So I scroll down a lot. Um, yeah, the art's pretty cool. I'll give it that. It's, it's a very interesting style. Uh, one of the the characters uh, you can play as is a buff parrot pirate. Yeah. With a big boomerang. Mm hmm. And he rides a frog. I swear there's a. It, it is. It's Squirrel Bard with an electric guitar. Hell yeah. <laughs> Squirrel Bard with an electric guitar. Um. Uh. And it looks as though they have like three different sets that you can get, so I guess you can go choose which ones you have. And... Yeah, and they've got an expansion announced mm -hmm. down here. Um, this, that's a, a, a very interesting skunk lady. Yes, the skunk lady. Yep. Um, Alfredo the deer archer. Yes. Um... And it looks like each one normally comes with a, like, vehicle, but you can mix yeah. and match them if you wanted to for different experiences. It's pretty neat. Because I guess, yeah. um, it looks as though they could take, like, uh, to create synergistic action decks. So I'm guessing, like, you get certain <clears throat> things and abilities and maybe cards for the different things for your character and your vehicle, and, you know, so you can come up with more interesting combos and stuff. Yeah. Honestly, it's... It's, 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 it's just, like, I would say here, it, it stands out more with the weird, like, with the, um, like, super intelligent, uh, futuristic, like, uh, animal slash furry aesthetic, but it probably could have just been fine as, like, beings on, ro on weird ships fighting giant monsters. I mean, it stands I out more. The, the furry stuff definitely makes it stand out a little more. Um, yeah, the art style is very cool. I will give it that. It's very pretty art. The miniatures from the pictures here look look very very well detailed. Yeah. So, um, how... you got 165 bucks, you know. And that'll get you all the... yours. Get you one of the basic boxes. Uh. And core, it gives you the barbaric after apocalypse and the core box one applicable. Yeah, so you is... get the core box and you get the expansion. Yeah, the one expansion. Uh, I, think, I think that's the expansion. Uh, I'm trying to figure out what's what. The expansion's down here. And the expansion is called the Challenger. Uh -huh. Oh, 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 okay, no, I get it. Um, they're maps. They're map boards. Okay. The one box gets, one, one gets you one board, or, uh, the other one gets you the other board. Okay. Gotcha. 
so yeah so and I think like uh, God it's so hard to understand Kick Kickstarters have are hard to understand sometimes yeah anyway it's a miniatures game it's expensive it is a that. miniatures <laughs> game miniature games are expensive um, oh. if it's your, it's your cup of tea, definitely it's, uh, I'd say that one would be an interesting one to check out if it is in your wheelhouse. Yep. Um, honestly, like, the, uh, fighting a giant monster is in my wheelhouse. I, I, I've yeah, always been a fan it's of really cool. giant monster movies and media and stuff like that, so, um, that's where I have to say on it. Uh, if I could afford that much, I would definitely be too big one. Oh, yeah. Interest games are expensive. Uh, uh, so, um, Homeworld Fleet Command has been announced by Modifius. I remember Modifius. seeing this something about Homeworld coming out, recently, like or being. Did I get an, might have been, yes. Let me check. I might have gotten an email about this because I get. There's the there's the role playing game, as well. Yeah. That might be what I saw. It's just, it's also like trying to figure out, you know, like, I have, I have don't always remember to check my um, email right before the show just to make sure if, like, because sometimes I keep things on here and I'm like, oh, yeah, I remembered I wanted to, you know, talk about that. Okay, none of these were, I think, doing it this week. Uh, good. I wasn't forgetting anything, at least for now. Um, I don't know a lot about, like, Homeworld as a thing. It's a sci-fi RTS, I think. Yeah, I, I think I've it's an RTS. I've heard about it here and there, because oh, I guess Gearbox Publishing is what who does it too. Yeah, um, which is whatever. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, oh, it's currently owned by Eraser Group or Embracer Group or whatever the hell they're called. Uh huh. Um, it look. It, it seems like this is a skirmish board game. I like skirmish board games; they're fun. Yeah. Uh, it's going to be... Played. They are going to bring it to Kickstarter in November of this year. Makes sense. Um, it's one to four uh, players. Uh, got 101 plastic models of fighter squadrons, corvettes, frigates, destroyers. It's going to be another expensive one. Yeah, it's, it's a miniatures game. game. Yeah, it's a miniatures game. Modifius does good miniatures games, though. Honestly. Yeah. So, I, like, I highly recommend their follow-up one. It's actually like, really good. Yeah. Not um, too expensive as far as the nature games go. So this one might not be too bad overall. Yeah. That, that doesn't mean we know the exact price, honestly. No, but if we're judging off of, like, let's say, Wasteland Warfare, mm -hmm. um, the an entire army for the MCR is, like, 110 bucks, which is, for a whole army is kind of a little bit low. On the lower side... Uh, compared to something like Warhammer, where it's much more expensive to buy. Yeah. Um, so, get your you have to get the idea of how much and compare uh, games like that to get an idea. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, if you're a fan of uh, Homeland or again like space combat miniatures game, it might be one to keep an eye out. You might play like X Wing or Armada, which are fantastic miniature games. We might have to uh, stop by and I'll check it out again. Yeah. We'll see the rules. But yeah, yeah. I'm for it. I like these kind of games. So, uh, we're getting two new Dark Souls board game core sets. Mm. Um, I have not played the Dark Souls board game. I've heard fine to mix things I've, about I've it. I've heard exactly one thing about the Dark Souls board game and that it's too complicated. Yeah, I felt like... It, it, the thing is, I've heard people say that it's too complicated. I've also heard some people praise it a little bit, but I feel like it's, it's, it, maybe it's the idea that like, it's complex but it just requires you to like snap in your brain at a certain point in time yeah. to understand it, you know because I, I have, I have played complex games where as soon as it snaps you're like, oh, this is actually really easy and I understand it all but the thing is, you have to like overcome a hurdle to get to that, it's not always easy to overcome that hurdle yeah, uh, I mean, it's got, like, characters from the game people like. Everyone likes good old Gravelord and that Nido, Nido. Yeah. He's a boss. I, no, I don't know, I don't play... I, I don't play Dark Souls that much. Hmm. 
I, I, think, he, I think he's a boss. Yes. But I don't remember from which game. I think Nito's from one. Because I've I seen played... people play through one and three enough times to know some stuff about those. No yeah. one plays through two, so like... Two's kind of a little too long. Yeah, I, I think I saw like one person play through two once, and it was like, wow. And I've no, I can't remember anything about that stuff. Uh, it was just a little too much. Um, so it's like, yeah. I, and I've seen some. I've seen a couple of times people like not lately, but a while ago. Like uh, there was the uh, when they put out the Dark Souls three randomizer. I think it was. Mm -hmm. Was it one? One of them had a randomizer. It might have been one. Uh, and that oh, was the other one's right. I didn't recognize it. The other one's Priscilla. Ah, Priscilla. Oh yeah. Uh, 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 Dragon Tail Lady. Yeah. Her. Who's, who's invisible apparently when you fight her. Uh, because I remember, like, you know, uh, that, again, randomizer, when she shows up somewhere, not always invisible, and that's kind of hilarious, because she normally isn't about it. Anyway, so, yeah. uh, it's a game that I've, like, eh, it's not necessarily in my wheelhouse, like, that's the thing, uh, so I, I've not really got into it, like, you know, uh, Jedi Fallen Order, which has some very light Dark Souls-type it's, elements. It's Baby's first Dark Souls. It really is Baby's first Dark Souls. That I was okay with, but I don't know if I'd ever dive into a full one. I technically own three. I think I got it as a part of three. Three is the angry Dark Souls because everything moves really fast. Yeah. Uh, I mean, that's one of those ones that people say are solid. At like one, one and three are the two. Anyway. Yeah. Um. So they're coming up with two new core sets based on. At least one of them I know is one of the DLCs. They both might be. I think the other's another area. Tomb of the Giants. I, know I, the, don't know what, I, I don't know what Tomb of the Giants is, but I'm pretty sure that... I think the Painted Worlds is. I think Painted Worlds is where Priscilla is. Yeah, that's where Priscilla is the, the boss of. Uh, uh, oh. I, I don't remember if the Painted World is just a location. Oh, the Tomb of the Giants is where you go fight Nido in the original. Yeah. Game. That's why they're like... They're like, hey, these bosses that people like a lot, we're like, you know, finally adding them. You know, uh, we've, we've had like whatever the other ones are in the original, I don't know. Um, so they are, again, they're supposed to all be fully uh, compatible. Um, they are kind of, in quotation, based games, but I guess it's the idea that you can use all the materials from any of them combined yeah. together um, in various ways. Um, I really either need to like try it out or talk seriously with someone who has tried it out yeah I don't have game. much of an opinion on it other than I know that um, Steam Forge well they have a, certainly a mixed record with RPGs mm. um, very good at making board games yeah they're the people who did the Resident Evil board games, which all three of those are fantastic. So, it's certainly like a, um, it's not a bad company for it, and certainly like, um, just, like, looking through a lot of their games, it's not necessarily, it's like an interesting, uh, selection of Oh yeah, yeah, they're the ones that did the Dark Souls RPG. <laughs> yeah, they don't have the they don't they don't have the greatest foray into role playing games. Ooh, that explains a lot. Um, but their board games are very good. Yeah, well, I mean, like, it it almost feels like the Dark Souls RPG was their like first foray into RPG. Yeah, it had a lot of problems. But that's something I could spend a long time talking about. Well, again, like, if you are I, I think it's something that I've talked about with companies in the past when I've been at like stuff like PAX Unplugged or various other events where I've been able to talk with people from companies. Uh, there is a huge difference between making a board game, like yeah. a traditional just board game, and an RPG. Oh, yeah. There are plenty of companies that do both, but usually they're different people that are working on the different things because they're so different. Yeah. And I've only played their Resident Evil board games. I've played all three of them. All three of them are great. I've not played the Dark Souls one. I've heard it's a little bit complicated. Uh, I don't know about the Horizon one. Horizon Zero I don't one. think the Horizon one's out yet. Uh, I think it's still, like, I think it might still be on pre-order. 
I don't I don't know if it came out or not. I don't know. The core might be out. Hard to say. Uh, I can't tell on their website. It could be out. It might not be out. It's hard to tell what's on pre-order and what's not. Um, but you know they've they've done a bunch of stuff. It's they're not a they're not a bad company. They've had a pretty good track record. Yeah. Overall, so you know, it's it's worth if you are a fan of that or if you've been interested because you're a fan of that type of game to perhaps check it out. Yep. Um. So, uh, I think that hits up our main uh -huh. topics. Okay. <sighs> So, um, let's dive into the deeper discussion topic, which I put here, which was concepts and builds when they work and when they fail. Mm -hmm. And I think the first thing, if I'm going to talk about this, I should define is the difference between a concept and a build. Yeah. Because those are very different. Um, the concept is your imagination. Like, mm -hmm. somewhere during your character creation you will get in your mind an imaginary version of what your character and what their character can do, and kind of stuff like that. You know, um, there will things that will help shape your concept, like, you know, I'm, a, you know, an elven bard, or a, you know, halfling druid, or a, a dwarven ranger, you know, if you're talking 5e, certainly. Yeah. Um, those things shape your initial idea. Um, okay. Things like background can do it too, and even like uh, things. If you're like a cleric and you're choosing your uh, domain right away, that that might have an effect on it too. And you come up with this idealized thing of your concept of your character. Concepts, the one that is harder to fail on. Yeah, it's your imagination. It can alter. Bill. Builds, however, oh. depending on what system you're doing, you can just pick the wrong options and make a build that doesn't function. Um, it's harder to do this in 5th edition, though there are builds in 5th edition which don't really function very well. Uh, but that's when you start getting into things like multi-class. Mm -hmm. Pathfinder, however, at least 1st edition, I don't know how it is in 2nd edition, 1st edition has a lot of problems where you can see something that's really cool but it's trap build and it just doesn't mechanically work very well. This is kind of what happened uh, to some degree with Anne. Yeah. In Carrion Crown. Umber saw what was admittedly a very cool archetype for Magus but it doesn't work very well as designed. It has its places I think certainly and it has its way that you could probably make the build work better. But it's the idea that um, you do give up a lot for what a Magus normally has and what a <laughs> Magus normally build is. So it's, it's vastly different from your average Magus. And certainly it could comparably be a weak build. It doesn't mean you can't play it. It just means you have to be honestly... You're on an uphill battle. Yeah. Um, um, I think things like... I, I, I can name a couple other builds more recently. I, I do have to say, like... Uh, uh, no offense to Lightning, but Ling's original build. Dragon Oracle with no strength. Yeah, Dragon you need Oracle's, strength for Dragon Oracle. They're, they're melee build. Yeah. There are um, plenty of, of Oracles you can do without strength, but Dragon is one of the ones that really needs it. Yeah. Um, I played in the past. Um, the build was the thing about this is it's it was a combination of concept and build failure for this one. Uh, back in the day, uh, I did a, started fifth level, three point five. I played a, a fighter rogue wizard drow. Oh, this one. Yeah, the initial concept had issues. Certainly, Car certainly. Did I say certainly? Uh, certainly. Hey, who cares about English? <laughs> I barely know it. Uh, and, and, like, as I played through the game, problems the build got worse. And that's the thing. It was a combination of, like, the way my concept was trying to work, and I was trying to work it with what was going on in the game. Like, 
I imagine my character working like this. I never had a chance to work like that. Then combined with things that were there. So sort of like, it was that weird thing of like, that character ended up not working because of a lot of factors. If you just took some of the things as base, you probably could have worked, made it work. Mm -hmm. You know, that's the weird thing. If I had removed the character aspect of that character and made an entirely different character with the same build, it probably would have worked. And that's the thing. That, that can happen, too. Those are the weird juxtapositions that you can have for characters. Yeah. I feel like that's why you took a step away from Rio. Mechanically, Rio works. Conceptually, yeah. Rio works. Conceptually and mechanically, in the situations that we were mm -hmm. in, Rio doesn't work as well. No. Um, now that we're on a big landmass, however, Rio works very well. Yeah. Uh, it's just that Shadow Oracle, well, really, Shadow Oracle and Summoning Build, uh, well, very cool, um, doesn't work very well uh, on boats. Yeah. Because you need uh, both a lot of space, and boat stuff kind of happens at, at a big distance, as well as, as honestly, uh, the, there are large stretches of uh, Skulls and Shackles where there is not a lot of combat, and Oracle kind of suffer with skill. And I feel like um, Shadow Oracle is a little bit more of a combat Oracle anyway. Sh Shadow Oracle is a little more combat and it's the stealth Oracle when you're not doing a lot of stealth on boats. No. So it's that interesting thing of like, it's it, it's it's basically like trying to be a little bit roguish without being a rogue. Yeah. You know, it's 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 rogue type combat. You're, you're built on stealth and fighting, you know, and again, it's not a bad build at all. It's not in, a bad you know, in, a, in a lot of adventures, it works very well, but in this specific adventure, it is a little bit weakened. It's sort of like right. going going back to both even Anne and Ling. Both of them had aspects of them which could have worked. <laughs> I gotta be honest. I feel like non-strength-based dragon oracle Kitsune could possibly work but it's a heavy build and requires yeah. a lot of things like um, going specifically the weapon finesse route right away because then you're mm. going finesse natural attacks and stuff like that. Yeah, the reason why it actually does work decently well specifically on Kitsune is Kitsune can start with weapon finesse for free. Mm -hmm. And then once you get to a certain fab, there, I believe there's a feat that gives you the equivalent of 5v weapon finesse somewhere buried in the tree. I don't, one. For that. Yeah. I don't remember which one. I don't remember which C tree you have to go down, but I know it's there. Honestly, the, even if they don't do that, you can just take Prana Strike. You yeah, know? you just take the Prana Strike. Because you uh, have so, Oracle spells, you buff spells, so you. you yeah. You, so you, that, you, that build can work, it just takes a lot of steam to get going. Yeah. And you've got to be ready for that steam. And, and that, on that end, you know, we've talked about in the past how some things with the way we set up Ling made it harder mm -hmm. to connect the Ling together. I think the had uh, Ling started with Common, uh, I think Ling would have been genuinely fine. Yeah. I, I think, think that would have cracked that. The, the, the not starting with Common is what killed the character. And just like I think one of the things that killed Anne a lot was playing up an android. as yeah. very android-y. It, it, it did not help because then when a lot of stuff happened it wasn't good for the character too and it was hard for the character and it, it drew stuff in the character in very weird directions and combine that with a very difficult build mm -hmm. you know that's... there are armored battle mage when trips out like half of Magus <clears throat> it does give you some interesting abilities mm -hmm. but again it ripped Sounds like the best part of the Magus base class. I think. Oh yeah, it, it got rid of the one. That, it wasn't. It, it was uh, not. It's either spell combat or what's the other one? I'm gonna look up the. I'm trying to remember. I'm gonna look up the. the, the thing. Uh, you lose. You lose spell combat. Okay, so you lose spell combat. Yeah, you lose spell combat uh, for the benefit of um, you get the combat casting. Ah, oh, that's 
not Which great. isn't not a great replacement. That's see that's what the problem is. Like um, spell strike is still there, which is very good. Spell yeah. strike is still uh, as much as spell combat is good, and I like spell combat. Spell strike still I feel like is the much better of those two. That's the one where uh, honestly you can go uh, keen rapier or scimitar and then just crit um, suck shock and grasp or another touch spell. Yeah, you also I you also lose out on the Arcana stuff that you get as Magus in favor of armor training, which I th I think that's kind of fine. It's okay. But you also lose in first spell combat. I feel like you still combat. Yeah. Scarian Crown is not the place necessarily for that. No, I can think of a, a I can think of a few decent adventure paths that would work. Yeah. Um, the ones in mind are some of the Chilexian ones because those are uh, more le less incorporeal shit and and more you're slapping beefy dudes and mages. I gotta admit, like Rise of the Rune Lords, even that's yeah. a lot of just like you know goblins, ogres, trolls. You know, it, it's, dudes. it's hard to make something that doesn't work in Rune Lords. It, yeah. it, Rune Lords is the very standard of fantasy adventure. Yeah, but like there's plenty of adventures where. Anne's basic concept would have worked, or build would have yeah. worked more. The, great, Again, the I, concept fucked it a little bit, definitely. I think taking, I think not being an android um, would have made the character a lot better. Or playing the android more like how I think <clears throat> it should be played, where I've talked about it's like, it's deeper chat, lightning, it's deeper. This is deeper. You want to hop in for deeper chat and lightning? I'm talking about character builds. We were talking about some things that were... We talked a little bit about how, like, uh, there was a time and a place for Ling, original Ling, and it wasn't, unfortunately, in Carrion Crown. Yeah. You know? Builds. Yeah, builds, builds good. Builds and concepts. Builds and concepts. I can't think of any 5e ones that are bad off the top of my head because it's 5th edition, it's really hard to make a fucking dysfunctional character in 5th edition. I guess, like, just... It's possible, but, like, really... <laughs> Well, I know I know one upcoming that will be very dysfunctional, but it's in a game that isn't combat heavy. So we'll be playing a character that has eight constitution. Mm. Like I, and I feel like that's a thing that there are ways to correct eight constitution. Hello, lightning. More. Oh, that's um, it, it, also, con doesn't matter that much. Well, in Pathfinder, you can correct it to a degree. Like I, I could make an eight con build in Pathfinder and still make it relatively work. I'd probably want to take things like toughness or the mm -hmm. bonus hit point from favored class, you know. Oh, yeah. The tough feet, the best feet of 5e. Tough, toughness, um, and you, items can be up your con eventually. There are ways that you can, like, I, I have to admit, like, I try, like, just, just side map tangent. Pathfinder. I try not to have lower than a 10 nowadays from Constitution for most characters. Mm -hmm. Just because of mm -hmm. previous experiences. But I will have things that go down to 8. Nothing below that. Uh, yeah. I've played, I played a, like, 6 car uh, um, con character. It's not fun. I, uh, mm -hmm. I won't do below 12 unless I'm an elf. If I'm an elf, I'll I'm, do 10. I might, I might do 14 con on every character from now on. That, I think that's completely suffer. fair. Um, I'm 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 pulling up one of the games. What's our? Uh, it's like Cyber Flu for something. Uh, it's called Cyber Flu for something. All right. So when you talked about builds, we, yeah. we literally Momo and I were talking about this like last night or something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, Ari, Ari Vera or whatever, because it's a weird pronunciation. Yeah, my my snake lady. If if this was just a pure combat game, um, there'd be nothing wrong with her build because she has. Uh, 10 intelligence, 10 wisdom, 19 charisma, uh, 14 dex, 14 con, and 12 strength. I think we did 30 points for this game. Yeah, this game was when I was experimenting with a 30 point buy, and I think it actually uh, worked out pretty well. Yeah, because like, the extra 3 points just kind of allows you to either have a more rounded character, yeah. or maybe an extra plus 1 in something. Yeah, Or it, or it lets you avoid having the, the 8 in something. Because mm. 8, 8 can suck. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, you you could choose to have an eight if you wanted mm -hmm. for like the like for a theme, but like in this game specifically, because it's a more like investigation game, mm -hmm. uh, Ari has a plus zero intelligence yeah. and no proficiencies with any intelligence or wisdom skills, 
So outside of maybe talking to people um, or, or magical investigation with like detect magic or something, I just sit around because yeah. uh, I, I have a very low chance to succeed on anything. It's so. that's just the unfortunate nature with that um, character. Yeah, but like if it was just a regular like dungeon crawl game, it'd be there'd be yeah, zero problems. Because Ari there. does like amazing in combat. Yeah, she's she's a good mage, but she's not good at really anything else. Yeah, <laughs> that's kind of the problem. I think it's one of those things is that like it's very hard in any system really to have a bad build in every situation. Yeah, you can have builds which tend to be worse, but then it depends on a lot of factors, like, what game are you thrown into, you know? And, um, and also, like, honestly, sometimes it depends on how you play your character. You know, I, I, getting back to it, mm -hmm. Umber didn't play Anne wrong. The way Umber played Anne, though, wasn't great. Yeah, the... The complete um, robotic nature of Anne made the character really hard to deal with. Yeah, because everything like any, was. Any like, I don't understand this. It was that, and then, like, kind of played up to a silly degree in an adventure that is meant to be relatively serious. Yeah. I think, I think the very serious nature that tends to be put on Carrion Crown <laughs> as a whole, combined with, like, Things like you're fighting a death call and your mentor mentor was murdered. It didn't tone. It was it was very tone with yeah. that. Um, you know. I will. Conceptually, there were some problems with Anne as, as well as a whole, um, because the character's uh, name uh, was oh. a joke. Yeah. Uh, Anne was a joke character. It was a joke name. Uh, I think like. It, I, what was um what was the gnome artificer Mac? Mac was a joke too. Mac was a joke character as well. Mac mechanically fine. Um The build was like conceptually amazing. I could not do it. Yeah. The, the the build was amazing. It was like this thing's gonna be insane. But then it was the way it was roleplayed, it was just kinda like ah See, that's mm. the thing is. Mm. I think for Mac, I understood where Umber was trying to go with it. I just think it was it, he didn't pull it off correctly, especially yeah. in the introduction. I think that's where it went. The wrong. introduction was real bad. Yeah, I I think that's where, like, we were introducing two new characters. Mm -hmm. We should yeah, have introduced one of them. Got more screen time than the other because that basically I was told like ah oh, you know wait I want I want you know Joe to have his his time and then. We, we spent, like, a bit too much time, had, and it would have been better if for them to just kind of, like, both had, be yeah, there. Had, had they then, been introduced together, yeah. Yeah, I think yeah, it would have worked that would have probably better. been a lot better. I think that's um, the way... It, it, honestly, yeah. it's one of those things is that, like, sometimes you want to be nice and give other people their screen time, but in a thing like that, where your, your sessions are limited time anyway, and mm -hmm. you don't know yeah. how things are going to go, just, if you're introducing more than one character, just have them both show up at the same time. Yeah. Because the thing with um, Just character inter introductions is that is where nine out of ten times uh, you are going to show your concept, and if you don't get to the concept off in a good way, or you do it in an annoying way, uh, mo uh, people may not uh, people people may not jive with the concept. Yeah, because first impressions, right? And, yes, and I think that's that's a point in time where. Because, I, I, again, I can see where Umber's concept was coming about for that one. It just... He failed to do his concept in a way that allowed him to build upon yeah. it in all of our minds. He basically made a mistake, like a couple of mistakes heavy on, that just made it difficult. Um, and honestly, yeah. some of the... I was confused by some of the jokes about it, like, you know, being... It, it was a very mean character... Yeah, and I kind of got that was the, I kind of got the feeling that it was just an, uh, an oops all meme character when uh, it was, the introduction was playing music from a phone. Yeah, <laughs> I, mean, that was gonna I think we've talked about like the idea of a meme character isn't bad. I I did a meme character today and it was pretty good. Yeah, it's just you have to 
do it right, and it's not. Yeah, you gotta be. Easy. You can't go fool with your meme. You have to. You have to do it subtly and still actually, you know, have a character beneath it. You have to be a random we... man with a badger on his head. Yeah. <laughs> did we talk about uh, since I'm since I'm in here and the show is all about me now? Yeah. Uh, did, did we talk about um, Natalia's and her weirdness? We haven't talked about Natalia's. That's one I haven't brought up because again, like I have to say this. I probably only pick up about 66% of what you wanted to do with Natilius and 66% of your understanding of your build, you know? Because you I mean, were I have building, the entire build. Yeah, you, were, you were building towards something, and I had an idea what it is, you know? But it was definitely one of those ones that takes a very long time to ramp yeah. up. Because you were yeah. trying to do Arcane Archer, right? No, or are you doing Elder's doing Knight? Elder's Knight. Elder's Knight. Yeah, that's a yeah. weird one. Yeah. I mean, which, uh, that is unfortunate it didn't work out because it's a really cool build but it just takes yeah, a lot of steam it, to get going it, it, I think my build would have popped off around 7 or yeah. 9 at the latest um, because I was still a bunch of wizard mm -hmm. um, yeah. so because I, I, I could fall back on guns because like mm -hmm. usually it's like oh you know take one level of fighter but it's like what if I took gunslinger instead yeah be ranged held, on, con on paper that's really really cool yeah and good. because I'm a I'm a um, uh, wizard, so my yeah. attack bonus is bad, but guns are versus touch. Like, mm -hmm. the, the build concept was good. I think. But I, I think a lot of it kind of came down to the adventure. Yeah, that she I was think in. Nat yes. would. I know an adventure. Nat would be really good in. I, I would. In Crimson Throne. Because Crimson Throne, you're fighting a lot of heavily armored Chelix people, so gun would be great. And Nat has a lot of the knowledge and investigative skills. Yeah, but also benefiting from being a gunslinger and Eldritch Knight eventually. So I think yeah. that, would, that would have been amazing in that, in that one. Yeah. I, I, th I think part of it, though, was a, a little bit on me uh, and just the fact that there was like five players. But there and, were a lot of players. And, and so when there's a lot of players, especially when they're like like big, uh, like char charismatic people that like mm -hmm. talk a lot and like really build themselves up, I, I tend to just kind of like step back because I'm fine not being in the spotlight but then that means that you have to push to get that character yeah. involved and that kind of didn't happen because of the like the way the adventure is presented yes it was the thing that it, it is the thing that I think early on you, it, it was one of those things that it's not always easy to re recognize especially for this adventure is everyone has to push forward a little bit you don't mm -hmm. have to necessarily be like a full spotlight character, but you do have to at least have a little bit more out there in this one because it's sort of like it's building up to all of you being figures in this ship, you know, that you're mm -hmm. going to be running eventually. So you have to almost establish that early on. And I think that's like a concept that's hard to have and yeah. hard to understand about part of it. It's one of those things yeah. that like now... I recognize that more that I've run it, I could, like, if I ran it again, I could be like, hey, know that eventually the goal will be to get away from this ship, get your own ship, and you will be the officers of the ship. Mm -hmm. So think of yourself as, like, evolving into this officer-type character, what type yeah. of officer mm -hmm. on a ship you would be. Because it was a year ago when this guy came from, but think back to it. For the first, like, maybe three or four sessions, a majority of the, the stage time uh, was Yakul and Revia being stupid and doing dumb things? Occasionally, yeah, and occasionally Quentin doing something. Occasionally yeah, Quentin, Quentin doing Quentin. something. Well, Super well, Rio Quentin. and Nat didn't really do a lot for those first X amount of sessions. Mm -hmm. See, and I feel like that's why Misty works better. Because Misty is the character that doesn't need to be like the big show person, but just like just sits there and like after they say something, they're all like. No, don't do that. That's stupid. Yeah. <laughs> you're, you're like the voice of reason. So you automatically are like caught in there. You're the real pirate. You're yeah. the real Misty, pirate. <laughs> the whole concept of Misty um, is, yeah, she's a, like a 34-year-old person who's been a pirate since she was like 18. Mm -hmm. So she's the real pirate, and so she can like correct them. And I, I yeah. basically, it means that like... I don't have to use Ambrose most yeah, of the time. Yeah, you don't time. have to use Ambrose. You have someone else who can logic the stuff out. <laughs> yeah. You just, you just like, have the, the dwarf appear, and it's like, that's a dumb idea! <laughs> out of yeah. a trap door. It's out of another trap door. <laughs> I love that using that dwarf. It's like, 
He's great. Um, <laughs> I do love him in his knowledge skills. Um, but like, yeah, conceptually, I think Misty is conceptually and mechanically one of the better characters I've made. Mm -hmm. uh, especially for Pathfinder. I think that um, conceptually in Carrying Crown, Zorim, my tiefling boy, was okay. Um, it was, again, first time being doing Pathfinder after a long ass hiatus. Um, I think conceptually, he was great. Mechanically, eh. I'm going to say something here. All of you sucked. Yeah. <laughs> like, everyone kind of sucked. In I different ways. I made a functional Sorcerer character, but he kind of still sucked. Sorcerer would have been great. The, the, the reason why... Common. Yeah. I should have forced the, oh, Common. Well, that was a you. Because you're like, hey, you're not from here. You don't know Common. So it's yeah, like, I okay. gave you the I option of learning it. Kind Thank of a mistake you. on yeah, everyone's you, part. You should have been like, no, you should really just. Yeah, I should have. That, 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 I, I will admit, that was my mistake. I should have yeah. been like, you also know this other comment is what I should have yeah, said. Yeah, it, it was kind of like, you like formed it as a suggestion, and I was like, ah, but I know Elvin. It's fine. Yeah, I, I um, recognize I, why at the start of Grand Crown Zorum sucked. <laughs> um, partially my fault for not putting my foot down, but. Because I always build my characters last to fill a role, the party was left with a really awkward situation of, shit, we've got no good melee and no good ranged person. And we also had no healers when I made my character. Yeah. Which is why I swapped from, like, Sorcerer so I, or forgetting how Pathfinder worked, because I hadn't played since, like, 2017, I was like, well, I'll just do both. You can't do that in Pathfinder. <laughs> you can do an okay... Like, what you can do is, you can specialize one and do okay of the other. Yeah. Like, you can't... Like, had I done Rapier Longbow, it would have worked better. Oh, yeah. But I was like, well, big swords are cool, <laughs> and I guess I'll have a bow. Uh, I, I don't think the big sword would have been great. I think what you should have done is... I should have done... Long sword, shield, sword yeah, and board. I should have done long sword, shield. Yeah. Because, like, I... I if I remake the character, one, I'd just make him a hunter from the start, which, or I'd do the druid thing, but get the class classes right. Um, but again, even if I did that, I, we still would have had the problem we don't got the melee dude. And our ranged person in the middle, he was a shit character. The, uh, the gunner? The yeah. gunslinger could have actually worked if they had actually, like, made thoughts that existed in yeah. their head sometimes. There is one... Fun recommendation. Two recommendations I could have done with this gunslinger is the player wanted to use a musket, didn't pick musket master. Should have just picked musket master. It's like the most broken arc. Mm -hmm. uh, were they human? They yes. were human. They could have got rapid reload as their first yeah. feat. Um, I don't know what they took for feats. I'd have to check. I, I don't remember. Should have done that. Uh, second thing. Use a goddamn melee weapon. You are going in Pathfinder at some point. You are going to need a melee weapon, especially with uh, Gunslinger, because like ammo. I made. I, I I will say this. One of my favorite builds that I did for Pathfinder was when I did Wrath of Righteous. I was a archer. Guess what I had? A plus one. I like. I had a really cool bow. I still had a magical battle axe because guess yeah. what? I could use it, and that was my melee weapon. You know, it's sort of like, or if I didn't have my bow, I had throwing axes. I had backup weapons. Yeah, just like for situations. Misty, Misty has obviously the rifle and the pistol, but she also has a plus one scarf and a really fancy rapier. Yeah. You have to be ready for backup situations, I think, is one of those things. Is that, you know, 5e doesn't build for that because. Your characters intrinsically have a lot of stuff built in them that fixes a lot of backup situations, you know, mm -hmm. which is good. Uh, you don't have to worry about those backup situations necessarily. But again, it's some of the things you have to think about sometimes. Like, honestly, like, I still think about that for 5e because, like, 5e, uh, sometimes you just need a ranged weapon or sometimes you yeah, just need a melee weapon. Most darn equipments are like, have an option for a ranged weapon. Yeah. Yeah. They're mostly like very, very few don't like like um I think even barbarians like yeah you, here, you have get five javelins yeah you yeah. just get javelins barbarians yeah <laughs> it, it, they build in for that they're like hey you should have a ranged and a melee Hell. because you never know when you need either or Hell. monk when she has as class like literally no option to be ranged outside of two subclasses they give you ranged weapons at the start. you get darts you yeah. get darts which on any other character are garbage but on monk they're amazing. 
Yeah. Oh, that's right, because you can use your martial arts die with Because you use your martial arts shit with them. Yeah, so they get more damage over time. But, so you see, like, that's the thing that the, the gunslinger needed that. I think Jess wasn't bad as a build, but she chose I, her abilities I, in the wrong order. Yeah, I think that if I'm talking pure mechanics, the only well-built character in that game was the witch. Because witches are very easy to build. However, as a character itself and conceptually... Uh, it needed a little bit of work and a little bit less I'm a scatterbrain. Because there are some instances, like in Ghost Fight, where uh, she picked up the octopus. And that just shouldn't have happened. Uh, <coughs> also, uh, take Healing Hex as the first hex. Yes, Healing Hex, especially when you're dealing with undead. Yeah, Healing Hex would have been so great. Yeah. It would have been at and least... Noodle Arms the spell. If you're going to do Witch and Carrion Crown, if, if for some reason you want to run Carrion Crown or play in it, I uh, do a healing focused Witch. I, I'm going to say this. Carrion Crown, a, a good chunk of it, conceptually could work. It just needs a lot of work. You need to... Do you need to put the legwork in to deal with a lot of the dumb shit? You, you, need, you need to have a little bit of writing skill yeah. and maybe connect things. I, I could make a lot of Carrion Crown work like and connected, but just by moving events around and actually, you know, uh, connecting things and having the villain exist for more than having the villain villain exist before the fourth adventure. I uh, have the villain like right away, just like a dude in the town that you meet. I, I've and read talk through, to during I, the festival. This is super side tension. I've read through Carrying Chrome, at least the first adventure, and all it says for introducing the main villain is when you do Harrowstone, he will send you a letter. <laughs> I, you know what I would do? I'd have him, like, in the festival, because there's a festival. And then, yeah. like, just have this dude come up to you and, like, oh, oh I see you're now, new in town. I will say, and be like, all friendly. The first three adventures has one main villain, and after that you learn there's a guy above him who's really been ordering yeah. him around. Which is, that's a trope, but it's not necessarily a bad trope, and it does mean yeah, you, can that's have, fine. you can have your climactic fight adventure three. I feel like you should separate out, into, like, six adventures, maybe seven. Uh, the fourth adventure, I'm not... Uh, you need a better reason to go there. You could probably yes, invent there's... one. You know, but like if if you build up a villain that you plan on killing off early, you you can build him up to be like, oh man, he's like this huge threat. And then when you confront him, he's just kind of an average threat. Yeah. And you're like, oh, that was weird. And then you search around, it's like, oh, he's Get an bomb. underling, which yeah. means they're so much stronger than him. And so you then you have an, you you um, raise the stakes. Yeah, yeah, it's Karen Khan has a mess. And all the characters that were in it were a mess. Yeah, yeah. I think that was my first time playing Yeah, it was a, such a bad introduction to Pathfinder. It's not a great yeah. introduction to Pathfinder. Uh, um, there's I, so I've many played, better introductions. Yeah, I, I've played a lot of uh, like a bastardized third edition, so I, I knew where I was coming from, mm -hmm. but Pathfinder has so many options, I'm like, ooh, yeah. this sounds fun. Yeah, yeah and, Pathfinder, uh, um, I, I talked about it a little bit, Pathfinder has the unfortunate nature of there's a lot of options that are kind of traps. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, most archetypes are actually just worse than um, base. Class. Yeah, those are, that's gone in second edition for the most part. Yeah. And I gotta say, like, like barbarian, yeah. like, almost every single archetype for it is just worse than regular barbarian. Most ranger Unless archetypes you have a good theme. Are, most ranger archetypes are bad. I mean, like, honestly, you can still play them and have fun with them. Yeah. It's just that you have to be prepared for going a different way direction. Way more specialized. Yeah. yeah. Specialized and a different direction. And yeah. you have so, to be ready to feel specialization. Yeah. Yeah, because because you know, like you, you go from someone who's generally good to someone who is really good or average at something. Um, so like yeah. it, some of the some of the archetypes are kind of traps. If what I learned um, because again I I've always been a Pathfinder player, but there was such a long gap that I forgot most of that. But what I learned in Carrying Crown uh, when I made Zorum and after that in playing him was uh, I learned how to make characters. Like, it was pretty rough. It's it, it had been a while for me too, so I had honestly remembered half of what you need to make a character, mm -hmm. which wasn't good for helping everybody else out. If you know, I like... would, because I intend on kind of re on kind of building that character, and I already know I'm going to do it. Uh, there is a druid archetype where you get rid of wild ship because I hate wild ship anyways. Uh, it gives you a bunch of good bow stuff, and you get slayer abilities, um, and I just do that. 
Yeah. You still get the animal companion. You yeah. see your full caster. I mean, like, again, um, y- y- it's just, um, I think Pathfinder is the one that screams it the most. But again, like, e- even outside of Pathfinder, just going back to, like, builds and stuff that don't work, it's, like, I have to say, like, it, it can very well be a build that's perfectly fine mm-hmm. that just doesn't work in the game you're in. Yeah. Uh, I can give a really good example. I was running a Bessem game. Mm-hmm. Bessem game was um, supposed to be basically like, if I can describe it, a little bit like, you know, they do with like um, Marvel's Secret Wars, where it's like a whole bunch of universes combined, but it's supposed to be like anime version I did. So like anime a lot of... Marvel? Uh, it was just supposed to be a lot of people got a lot of weird powers. You know, from different sources. So, like, you know, all of a sudden, you could have, like, you know, weird, like, supernatural powers or magical powers or things like that that happened. And the idea was there was a specialized, like, school that was created on, like, an artificial island. All of you are characters going to this. You, you, no matter where you are, this is an idea of how to, like, basically learn how to use your powers and stuff. You could be any walk of life, you know... I want to run a magic school like game. Even even if you're only at the magic school for like one or two levels or something, you can like stretch that out and have a lot of like character development stuff. I think that'd be fun. But one person made a character that I said like you can have this number of things that are like max ranks. This made a couple of max ranks powers and that was it. They chose nothing else. Oh no. So they were they were like they were like 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 you know like key focused martial artist or something and I'm like you have nothing to learn. What the hell will you level up? So, so for some sort of context here, in Bessem, everything is like point by. So, like your stats are the same as like spending points for like magic spells. Yeah. So that that means if you were playing a five E character, they'd be like playing a sorcerer that has like all tens or eights in their stats. Maybe they have like twelve charisma or something, mm-hmm. and they have spells, no class abilities, no skills, no saving throws, that <laughs> no no equipment, yeah. nothing. You, all you have is base stats and magic. Well, it it, it, <laughs> oh. it, would, it was the idea of for really behind it though. It was like you know, I spent all my points on all of the abilities that like were what my character's abilities are. Mm-hmm. So it's sort of like I'm a key martial artist. What do I have? A bunch of martial arts powers. Okay. How good are you at? I'm the best that I can be at them. Okay. What will you learn at this school? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm here to be a teacher, actually. Yeah. I'm going to punch the students. <laughs> they also want to be like, yeah. I inherited a martial arts tournament from my father. <laughs> I'm like, what? Right. That's <laughs> a little that's... weird. Um, I can talk on a build that happened more recently in a 2D20 system. Uh, in the Fallout game I ran, you had your energy weapon build with your science word. Yeah. It worked really well. Um, Eric had the you know melee weapon strength build with the super mutant. Mm-hmm. Worked really well. Cell had luck build, which on paper looks like you ought to be amazing because you can substitute you know luck for your attributes and shit for skill rolls and stuff. The problem with that is it's actually really shit because you get nine points so over the course of a session you have nine times you can be useful oh, after no. that you got nothing i i think in um xp level three in their system which is more of a hybrid of like mm-hmm. 5e and homebrew and stuff i think in that one you add like half or your luck modifier to the attack rolls. Yeah. So uh, and, and in that system, it's de- it's designed mm-hmm. you hit very often. So yeah. it's like and cell based the character around uh, getting the mysterious stranger perk to go off. Mm. That never happened once in that game <laughs> because cell had to use all of his luck points on skill rolls to be useful. Oh, I, th- I think it's the thing is you should have specialized, like, you could have still the luck. You could be good at luck, but you really should have also have... been more of a generalist than yeah. a specialized. Yeah, maybe have, like, a, a like a secondary, some secondary things or something like that. Because you, the way Fallout 2D20 works is you get, I think, three or four stat arrays. General, um, 
experience specialized. and specialized and things like that or like specialized expert so you can be if you want to be just general boy you get a pretty standard stat array of like here's like three stats that are okay you have maybe one dump uh, the next tier, you okay, you maybe have two stats that are really good, but the rest are like, okay. The super specialized build, you have one good stat, the rest are garbage. And so that can work really well on like a perception or intelligence build, but on a luck build, where you're already going to be limited in how useful you're going to be, all of your other stats are going to be garbage. If you're going to do a luck build, you should probably do a more general build. And just have good luck. Because like, my build, I had basically two good stats. I had yep. intelligence, which was like maxed out, and I had perception, because energy weapons use perception. And I'm mm -hmm. like, I need a kind of combat stat. Okay, perception. That was that was why I took it, you know. And that's why I had these two good stats. And my other stats were okay, but like a lot of my stuff was built around intelligence and perception because that's yeah. that was my build. And so like I can see having a luck build. You just need a second thing. You need something you can do secondarily. Yeah. I feel like I mean I haven't I didn't play. Uh, I I think I was in the game and I, but I think I was stick with COVID at the time. Yeah, you, I just you had, got I you had, got sick with COVID, so you didn't have the the ability to I, make a character. Which I I had no creative brain energy. Yeah, no, I understand that because when I had COVID in September, I was fucking bedridden. Yeah, I, I wasn't bedridden. I was just tired, and the the biggest thing I I noticed like after the fact is I had no creative energy. Yeah, like that, my brain was just you, like running at half power. COVID leaves you so mentally drained for like a yeah. couple weeks afterward. And and so because there was there was one day that I just woke up and I'm like I have all these ideas for games mm -hmm. I must write them down, and I realized it's like oh yeah I'm like not sick anymore. Yeah, it was such a weird thing. So I have another five E character open because that's mm -hmm. all I play it these days apparently. Uh, that's fair. Um, and and this character is not hyper specialized, mm -hmm. but what they are is a skill monkey, which is... I actually like playing highly skilled characters. Mm -hmm. One, it, it helps with, like, checks. Because yeah. sometimes it's just like, hey, roll this weird thing, you know? Or, like, I am proficient with this. Th this is something that normally 5e is just like, you can just help. I, mm -hmm. I feel like 5e is too generous on the player sometimes. Yeah. So, like, I, I, I'm probably... Unless the players have a good like way, like they're helping. If you're not proficient at the skill, you can't help someone. Yeah. The way I what are do you doing? it is any like if it's a strength skill, you don't really need proficiency in it. But if yeah, it's like, like if you're pushing a rock, whatever. If it's a, it's for lack of a better word, knowledge skills because so they don't yeah. exist in five E. They do technically exist. If it's any of the knowledge based skills, you need um, proficiency to help. And anything that's intelligence is a knowledge skill. So. Yeah. Uh, Arcana, history, uh, investigation. I think. I think you could definitely help. You you um, could help. Um, nature. Be very great at it. Yeah, nature. And religion. Those are like the big like knowledge yeah. ones. Uh, I just kind of surprised that investigation is intelligence. It can be. I think there's rules that because some of the skills have rules that you can swap. Them. I think investigation can be swapped with wisdom, just like how um, intimidation yeah. can be swapped with strength. I would definitely allow someone to roll investigation with wisdom because I like I can see both uh, arguments. Yeah, it, it, it's just how you're doing it, right? You just have to describe yeah, yeah. how you're doing it. I think mean, I think that's one of those things that like it, we don't do it enough, but they do describe yeah. that you can yeah. swap things, you know, in five uh, E very easily. Yeah, there, just... there's rule there's rules for it, there, but you know they don't really come up a whole lot. Yeah. And also the sheet doesn't let you... Like, no, you have roll to roll a d20 it. and then math it out yourself or yeah, use the dice yeah. roller. Uh, I'm actually considering having a tool because um, mm -hmm. you can swap that. And if you're proficient, then you just have, like, this is, like, replacement skill or something, right? And then you yeah. just roll with the attribute. I yeah. think that'd be a good way of getting around it. But the, this character, uh, they have super, super average stats. I do have a 9 in strength. I, I believe this was also a 30 point. Build. Is this the? This is the Grim is? Hollow. Game. Yeah, her. Uh -huh. I've not looked at uh, that character. Yeah. No, uh, I, I do not have an 18 in my primary stat, which, for like 5e, is like it's not great, but you're still be a decent character. It's what you're expected to have at level yeah. one. Generic. Um, so yeah. Generic. Yeah. But, like, like, but. <laughs> <laughs> fucking general. 
<laughs> but I have I have a nine strength. I have a fourteen dex, fourteen con, uh, twelve intelligence because I'm tired of being a dumbass. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> Holy uh, shit, that's so many skills. So I have a lot of skills. I think I had. Um, uh, I think I have like skill expert. Yeah, so I got another skill um, one skill. So takes, I think I think takes, it's, it's, it's takes skill at level four. Just get more. I'm, I'm tempted to honestly. Um, because the most, I, I the have most skilled three. person in all the land. I know I got I got I got three from my class, two from the background, and one from a skill. So I got six skills. Um, I know my Arcana is not going to be amazing because I only have a, a twelve in intelligence. But, yeah, but the little check mark means you can help. Yeah, but it also makes sense for my character to actually yeah. be knowledgeable in this. Where I, I think Ari isn't, but Ari's a sorcerer. She's kind of a dumbass. Ari's a Ari's a big dumbass. It's true. Uh, she she's just a, a big sexy snake lady who hits things with magic. Stupid Her sexy st Stupid sexy snake. Lady. Not not Jared's yeah. type. Un yeah, well, too, it's too too tall. Too tall. She's too big. <laughs> But like, but like this character, I, I, I'm by not doing the like mid maxi, like oh, you know, if I asked Momo to swap my charisma to wisdom because I'm playing an unoptimal race mm -hmm. class combo, I'm like, no, fuck that. I'll, I'll take the plus two charisma because it fits with the character, right? Yeah. Uh, and I don't care if I'm slightly more average, um, because I think it, it, by being more average, it fits with the character idea more. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, We'll see what happens when I actually play the character, because sometimes I'm a big dumbass. <laughs> yeah, no, that's I feel that. Um, yeah, I mean, most of the characters in this game are, are decent. I, but again, like I feel like five E, as you said, it's a lot harder to it, be. It's, bad. The, I mean, the the quickest way to make a character that doesn't really mechanically work is to start with below a sixteen in your game stat. Uh, play um, a monk with eight uh, con. Yeah, that's how you. That's how you build a bad character. In five Basically, um, just a side note for how fifth edition is designed. Um, mechanically, it is designed for you to have a sixteen in your main stat and a fourteen in your secondary stat. Yeah. Um, you can definitely get away with not doing it, but you're gonna have a slower character build, and you might not have the best time. Because so much is based off your main stat, whereas something like Pathfinder, you can be a little more general because you need multiple stats to do a class instead of just two. Yeah. Like, Natilis has so many skills, and wizards don't get a lot of skill points per level, but that's, they have intelligence. Mm -hmm. So I have, like, a plus six to skill ranks yeah. every level or something. So, like, she was mega nerd, and, like, like when, when like she left the party when I was like I, I can't you know I'm just I'm not having as much fun as I thought yeah um, well like it, it was noticeable uh, no I it's get like it. I roll a knowledge skill does anybody have this skill nope no. <laughs> so the, the problem mostly comes down to is uh, we're all classes that don't get the knowledge the two knowledge skills we need yeah and I didn't really think that I was filling that role until after I left the game because I was just like oh I'm I have a gun and I use magic. Yeah, well, you were you were filling the skill role. Yeah, I guess I was. At least the knowledge skills. Anyway. Yeah, um, which a wizard usually does, decent. anyways. I have pretty decent perception. Um, like, oh, it's definitely noticed that no, very noticeable that the perception character is gone uh, now because Misty's off on that? a different Misty who has like a twenty oh. perception. Ah. Uh, let me open up carrying crown. Uh, what level are you guys? Did you guys level up? I'm assuming you have. We're like level nine now. I am now, yeah. I, um, I've i taken a look at Nat to be like, you know, a little behind. Yeah, I mean, I have the the build guide. I literally can just pull it up. It's just picking spells. Yeah. Um, uh, well, it's a good thing. It, it, it's one of those things that, like, yes, Pathfinder rewards off <clears throat> builds, but you don't necessarily need to make them. Like, i got to be honest. If in this game. campaign I could make a wizard with... 15 intelligence to start out with. Yeah. Now you're like, well, that kind of sucks. Just don't do a DC build. Yeah. yeah. Do buff. Buff wizard. Buff wizard. Buffs or buffs. touch attack spells. Touch attacks. Um, yeah, yeah, summons. Yeah, that's the thing with um, uh, Misty is she has a really low spell DC, so she is purely buff. Yeah. Now, granted, 
that can sometimes bite you in the bat, but, but for yeah. like dispels and shit like that and things like that. But that doesn't come up a lot. No, we're not. We don't deal with wizards a lot. Or you deal with illusionists. Yeah. Apparently, pirates like illusionists. That kind of makes sense. It does. Well, I know if I'm going to pick sea invisibility then if I come back. I've gone. Oh, yeah. so because I hate... In... Pathfinder invisibility sucks dicks. I yes. hate it so much. It's really shit to go against. Um, but sea like, invisibility, invisibility is just really nice Why? to have. Um, if you don't have sea invisibility, that person is just uh, going to kill you. Yes. I am the only one in the party with sea invisibility. Well, Misty is. And also Rio. I think Rio has. Fortunately... I am level 7? I have to do two level ups. He has to do two levels, which is honestly not that hard. Like, for I mean, I'm, I'm just taking, spe basically taking online, spells is so I think much I get worse. Two, per level? two see, per level. Well, that's one of the things I have to say for Pathfinder. 99% of the time, I default to what's in the player's handbook for a spell. Yeah. Oh, I gotta be honest. <laughs> there, there are so many spells, but I. Unless it has a really bonkers <laughs> name, I mostly just ignore them because yeah. I know it, they're like, oh, from this one campaign book that's about fighting goblinoids, here's a spell that's blow up goblinoid. <laughs> it's like, that spell will only be good if you're fighting goblins. Yeah. <laughs> yeah there's, there's a, a lot there's of a, those. There's a lot of that. There's a lot of just random spells um, where you're like, this doesn't yeah. really work in any other situation. I, mean, I don't know if I've ever had a truly terrible build in 5 years. Yeah, or, I, or concept, honestly. Um, I, I, there's there's two characters that are five E. That's why I was jumping in because about builds. Mm -hmm. Like, like because I already talked about Ari a bit, right? Yeah. Um, and mostly it just comes down to the fact that she's a mage, but she's a dumbass. So yeah. when it comes to like, hey, roll Arcana, I'm not proficient and I have a zero. Yeah. It's just kind of like I do nothing. So um, that's kind of bummery. And the other one is is Eve. Mm -hmm. um, e Evelyn, I'm not quite sure exactly what the, it's a weird Star Wars name, so it's yeah. slightly spelled different. Um, she's basically just a, a beefed up rogue, but in the Star Wars 5e system, rogue is actually one of the least buffed. Because yeah. Because rogue is already really good. Yeah, rogue, rogue so, didn't get a whole lot. So she's like a super, super highly skilled, deadly character, in, kind of, because some of the other party can dip out. Uh, a lot of damage in yeah. their turn. So, like, when I get a sneak attack, I was like, that's pretty good. And then someone does, like, two of those on their next attack. I'm like, wow, I feel yeah. really weak. Um, yep. But because of the way the adventure is going, a lot of my cool skills just don't come up. Because it's all like, hey, force users, roll a history check for force thing. Well, I'm not playing a force user, so I guess I yeah. do nothing. It's partially on me, partially on the direction the game went. And it's nothing yeah. I can do that much about it because people were like, we should do force stuff. Yeah. I'm, I'm, like, I, I could bring Ravshai back, I but I, one I don't session. think she would. Yeah, it, it was one session. Eve is a very simple character to play because yeah. basically it's like, I shoot three times. That's my turn. Next, please. Eve has picked, the best part is Eve has picked the, the correct solution multiple times when she just shoot. Her flaw. Her, her flaw is literally shoot first, ask questions later. I think uh. an important thing about 5e that I kind of want to, like, mm -hmm. add in here, because it's something that thinks to mind is, you know, there are just some builds we don't see, though. Yeah. I think it's because there's just some archetypes that are bad. They're um, obviously bad that no one plays them ever. No, no, most monk, fun fact, is bad. Yeah, open palm. Uh, open palm, way of mercy, way of mercy. Uh, sun soul, and kensai are the only four good I, ones. I would argue that kensai is actually not that good. Kensai. I played one. Um, and it, it definitely it was, depends. On, well, it's, it's, well, no, kensai is not good anymore because monks can just get weapon proficiency now. That too. That's why like, Ken, kensai is kind of bad now. Yeah, it, Kensai needs to be upgraded because of that optional yeah. like rule. But because I think um, I gave you like longsword proficiency with Viren or something. Yeah, because what else just get uh, longsword? Yeah. So you can be a monk like, with a hey, longsword. I, I don't. I, this might have been before that rule came out, or I, around. It, the it time. was before that, and then the book came out, and they're like, "Yeah, just use it." Yeah. 
Yeah, because I was like, you were saying, like, as a wood elf, I technically still have this proficiency with longsword. Can I just use it as a monk weapon? I'm like, yeah, sure. I don't care. You know, and here, it's dex re- version. Go ahead. Go, it, go nuts. It's really not that unbalanced. Yeah. It's like, oh, no. Because you eventually do longsword damage as a monk. Yeah. And with your fist. It's like, um, yeah. And then, like, oh, oh you're... monks are damage characters. They're strikers. Monks are the striker of fifth edition. I, I can yeah. just remember in my last three times of playing 5D proper, which were Banner, mm-hmm. uh, Badger, and, um, God, I'm forgetting his name. Marty. Right. Not Marty. Oh, Marty. Not Marty. Oh, Marty was a was a character there, and then also, but that wasn't the one I'm thinking of. I'm thinking of my okay. elephant, my uh, Lux. Oh, oh, the elephant. The elephant. Gets the yeah. Kill. yeah, yeah. That guy. Like Marty, I had an idea of what. Uh, even Marty too great, I think. All four of them, I had to take a look at like what the hell build do I want to take and what direction I want to take. And yeah. while looking through them, I'm like, wow. Th- th- like some of them had choices. Like I think I I had some choices. That game still. For, I could look at what Marty. For Marty. Sometimes. Marty was scout, I think. I went scout. Oh, that's right, scout. Yeah. I went scout because scout was the way to go. Uh, honestly, like there was, it was a lot of them that were just these are just bad. Like especially yeah. for banner for monks. I was like looking through them like they're just oh. bad. Yeah. Uh, there, there was only one other monk subtype that kind of worked, but you felt it didn't match the character. Yeah. Where I was like, this one could work because of this reason, and you're like, eh, maybe. Monk has the problem it. of the very first subclass they ever made uh, is the most strong one, and it's kind of been a whole mixed bag since. Yeah. Yeah. Open Palm is like, for being a player's handbook subclass. Yeah. It's really good. Open and, Palm and like, is the straight, the damage one, because you get the, so much, sorry. you get so much unarmed attack bullshit you can do. The the funny thing that I've noticed though, with um, the new sorcerer subtypes, um, it's like man, dragon subtype is garbage, and it's like actually it's still pretty decent. Yeah. Because you actually lose quite a bit of stuff to get those extra spells. And all you get is the extra spells. You know, yep. the, the other one is like, get immunity to a damage type. Get 13 armor class. I, I don't know if you get extra hit points or not. Um, I'd be thinking of a dwarf. But it's like, it's pretty good. You get wings. Like yes. level 9 or whatever. You, just, you can fly. I am infinitely. of the opinion that um, Draconic Bloodline is mechanically... Uh, the strongest sorcerer for two I, reasons. I still think it needs one or two spells yeah. of your element, though. For, for for two specific reasons, I think is you get one additional hit point each. You level. do get extra hit points. You do. The other oh, thing, yeah. you get natural armor, <sighs> which is like really good. Yes, which is why draconic sorcerer is specifically very broken for multiclassing into paladin. <laughs> because you can be a paladin, not bard uh, in heavy armor. Yeah, I think that's, I th- that's, I think that's the thing that like, I want to bring up the topic of like, why multiclassing is bad in five E, and this is specifically one of the two reasons. Either what, either the multiclassing hurts you way too much, mm-hmm. or it abuses to broken builds. There are oh, yeah. so many multiclasses. There's nothing in between that are, there are is nothing just in broken. It's either it's, it's either just sucks so bad or it's broken. I can name four of the most broken multiclass right now. Uh, Rogue yep. Barbarian. Oh yeah. Um Sorcerer Paladin. Yep. Bard Paladin. Yeah, it's basically the same concept. Yeah, it's the same concept. And though it's not as broken anymore, Coffee Lock can still be broken. It wasn't broken before, it's just people we're bending the rules to make it yeah. sound amazing. Co- and it, Coffee it's Lock like, is, no. is still still mildly abusive. It's still good. Um, but I think the... People just the, assume you can short rest infinitely. The more can't. broken one, uh, which is something I don't see people do that much, Paladin for long, because you get short rest smite. Oh, mm. short rest smite, yeah. Yes. Paladin Warlock is very broken, but people don't pick it a lot um, because it's just kind of weird and Warlock's bad. Well, because they're, they're the, the weird thing is, if you did that, you'd take, like, the Celestial Patron, which means you get two different Lay on Hand type of yes. pools. 
Um, Which would be pretty cool. I'm sorry, that yeah. sounds awesome. Um, Celestial Warlock uh, Paladin and Celestial and Hexblade Warlock Paladin are the are two oh. very broken builds. Yeah, Hex Hexblade Paladin. You, you just like you just serve a Fey God or whatever. Yep. I want to do that now. Damn you! <laughs> it's very broken. <laughs> I... um, because you can be a Paladin, um, and your main stat would just be your charisma. I think Holy that's shit. just it's, all charisma. It's one of those things. Is like. I, I have to say, when I was playing my Luxodon, I felt broken. All I was was a Luxodon, which allowed me to have like an 18 con, and a Circle of the Stars Druid. Yeah. That was it. There wasn't um, anything special about it. But I was. I, Luxodons get con to AC, so yeah. I was like tanky as all shit. Druids are pretty good in 5e. Yeah. It, yeah, Druids as a base class are really good, and then a lot. Pretty much every druid subclass is good. There's maybe like one or two that are not good. Uh, in one of the players' handbooks, the one that's not Moon, um, forget what it is. It's it. Oh, uh, Druid of the Land. Land, the land Druid good. is not good. I think it's um, situation situationally good if you're like, oops, all one territory. You can just have that it, one it's, land. It's okay. It's designed to be like the. Um, arcane or knowledge uh, domain type cleric, yeah. which just gets extra spells. That one you get like an extra cantrip, an extra spell and stuff, I, I think, but you don't get enough. I think it's she Shepherd and Land are the two that aren't great. Yeah, I don't know about Shepherd, but I, I, um, I did play Land because I'm like, oh, this one's like a caster. But at the end of the day, you're still a druid and you have a very small spell list. Yeah. But I, I think that's like kind of where it felt like, you know, playing that character because druid is so much better than a lot of the others and it has so much more solid. Like, I compare it to, like, you know, Marty or Badger or, you know... Um, Marty, once you got high levels, it was hard to balance the game because I, of your sneak attacks. I will. And you had, like... Plus, you had such Scout's a good. stupid attack bonus. Yeah, Scout's good. Yeah. yeah I will, will 100% say Badger, uh, as a DM, um, actually a nightmare to do. Yeah. Because I'm just like, hey, <laughs> attack me. Yeah. You're actually, it's just Fighter Cavalier. It, 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 fighter Cavalier um, is, is very strong, oh. especially if you're heavy armor fighter. Well, that's the thing is, I was the heavy armor fighter, but I have to say, Badger is kind of boring. That, yeah, but that, the downside is you're a very boring character. Yeah, I'm a boring if character. If you were variant human and you had Sentinel, you would have been unfreaking yeah. stoppable. That's the thing is, I was just the distraction tank. I was yeah, literally the, the the World of Warcraft. I'm the tank. Hit me with yeah. all the attacks. I can't really do much else other than absorb yeah. damage. <laughs> I mean, yeah, the way around it was AoE spells. Uh, but, just, like... just be... Um, Multi-class into three barbarian, get totem barbarian, and then be angry. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you badger rage. <laughs> I, I know that uh, Viren um, was a monk player. Now, granted, it wasn't like mechanically the strongest because you lose out on your monk stuff. However, monk is also not mechanically that strong. You were a way of mercy, I believe. I was a way of mercy monk, which is. In my opinion, is currently the second best monk, next to open hand, um, purely because it's versatile and it has uh, rare damage type. Yeah, because you can do necrotic as a you punch. Can do, or you can you can do a necrotic punch. Yeah. Um. I was also sun Claire, which is broken because you get fireball. <laughs> now, granted, I didn't get fireball in that game. Yeah. But if that game went on long enough, I would have had fireball as a monk cleric, which is very broken. You're a cleric that is not in the constraints of armor, and you're really good at punching shit, and you use your decks for everything. You didn't have evasion, though, because you weren't... Because that's a really high Did not have evasion, though. yes. Um, that's why I think the build isn't necessarily mechanically great, and can be quite bad character build, but um, having healing ability in cleric spells makes up to to a certain degree. Yeah, because you, you had healing as Way of Mercy, but by going into Cleric, you ended up having better heals, plus you could do other yeah. magic. Um, yeah, and it was also, uh, it was a monk that had access to Shield of Faith. Yeah, so you, 
you were very good in combat. I think, <laughs> um, since we have got a little, like, side tangent on the topic here, I think it comes down to that every system, and you're not going to get away from this, will yeah. have builds which are better and builds which are worse. Um, certainly, we've talked about it, how 5e has... It's more glaring, I think, that when it's worse, it's worse. When it's better, it's better. Like, Pathfinder... It's because there's such a huge swing. Yeah. Pathfinder, the fortunate thing is, if you just play base class, you're not going to find that stuff. It's the archetypes where you start... Where you start experimenting in choices that you come across some of the shit like that, you know? It's less forced, I guess you could say, on a character, that you have to make a choice into, like, shit or not shit. You can just play the standard. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and certainly there are other systems where you crutch yourself a lot of times. And crutching yourself mechanically or conceptually aren't necessarily bad, but that does lead down... That's a, that's a very quick leads down a path of there's problems. Yeah. Um, and First as the one, android... Not having fun. And as the android is a crutch that yes. Umber put on himself. Yeah. yeah. And crutches aren't necessarily fun. Yeah. That's 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 then the big things about it. It's like do you want that for character building? Is it gonna be fun for you to deal with that Thank shit? Yeah, I kinda did that with Ling. <laughs> yeah. I, I think the the thing is, I see Ling as this combination of things as I could have done better. We all like there are things in the in the conceptual like, build that could have been better, there are things in the way like that unfortunately it was hard for you to play. That could have been better, but that was also set up with a combination of, like, it's... It, Ling was, like, a perfect storm of problems. Um, but, like, we we found some weird, like, feet combinations <clears throat> and stuff that actually made Ling a lot better, but it was her mystery was a martial mystery. Yeah. And that was the biggest problem. Yeah. Like, that, that right there, if I wasn't a martial mystery and I had picked one of the other ones... I don't think Ling would have been a problem. This part sure she's so common. If Ling was one of the caster mysteries, yeah, uh, she would have been amazing. Yeah, I because we, we found a way to get the uh, channel or whatever, yeah. which is based how many channels you get is based off your charisma. Yep. Hey, guess what oracles use charisma? Mm -hmm. I think what I was saying is there is a possibility for the Ling build you had to work, but it would have been a, a complete. It would have been like the base build of. Dragon, Oracle, Kitsune, no strength. You would have taken a completely different direction. You would have had to take a, a direction where you're taking things like, you get the optional weapon finesse from Yeah, I'd have Kitsune. to get weapon finesse. And yeah, Kitsune, you can just get that as Kitsune. Though. And go, like, Rana Strike, honestly. Yeah. Stuff, yeah. And, and some of the other stuff that make you have a lot of melee attacks that do damage, actually, you know? It's very yeah. doable, but it's a very slow build. It's a slow yeah. build still. Like, honestly, Pathfinder Cleric's are a little slow build. Yeah. Cler yeah, clerics are uh, uh, divine casters are slow in Pathfinder. I I don't mind like they're not the they're not the worst for slow builds, but they are like you're gonna feel you're gonna feel like you you don't do a lot of them healing yeah. and maybe occasionally some extra melee damage early on. Yeah, like honestly. if you're a cleric, you're mostly gonna be healing and buffing. Yeah, I think the problem really shine when we stop fighting undead. Because yeah. I could do channel against undead, and yeah. I like we had one encounter, and I don't know if Tandis had like one or two extra enemies or whatever, but Ling obliterated the entire encounter basically on her own. Yeah, yeah. it was like holy shit, this is amazing. Mm -hmm. And like that was the last time we fought undead. Yeah, the the, the, the problems with Ling started to shine through. Um, towards the, fighting golems. Towards the end of Care, uh, uh, Second Adventure. Yeah, it's just Second Adventure when we did Slash Karamak. And then it only got worse in the third adventure when we had to deal with, with werewolf. Yeah. It, it's it, it I think it's another thing that like there's a lot of very uh, that that's a problem with carrying crown too, the harsh tonal whiplashes that happen yes, a lot. It's way too You're varied in this sponsor so type. Many Weird things. Yeah. It, it's way too varied in sponsor types. Other APs are more focused than what you fight. It, it's sort of like I understand the concepts they wanted to because the idea was Frankenstein's monster mm -hmm. behind it, and that's why. But like, they it's sort of like grabbing it's that. Presented like, bad. It's there, there's a lot of problems with yeah. with uh, trial reduced. There's a because, lot of them. 
I, I would completely, if I was writing this or remaking it, I would completely rewrite everything about Trial of the Beast. Oh, yeah. First of all, I wouldn't have it about the Beast at all. Mm. I would have it about, like, a friend of the professor. Like, he's been accused of murder or something. Because the party has attachment to that. Not just like, oh, yeah, there's some weird thing. You should probably help. It's like, this is really such a weird change. What I would do, if I was right, and this is getting into, like, the this super side tension also nitty gritty, right? So you could still have the beast. However, the dude who turns into it. Oh, Instead yeah. of just flesh gold. Yeah. See, see, I wouldn't get rid of the beast, because like Tana said, like Frankenstein's monster. Yeah. I would just move it to be more yeah. of something that you think is a threat uh, that turns out to not be. I, I would change it from Frankenstein's monster to Jacqueline Hyde. Oh, I like mm. that, yeah. Yeah, that's pretty good, yeah. Mm -hmm. But I, I think making the Trial of the Beast about a dude that knew the professor that has some information but you can't talk to him because he's been arrested for, like, murder yeah, or something. You know, and you need to prove his innocence. I'd, I'd also get rid of the three-day time constraint because that yeah, makes it so the players well, can't think, do fucking what, anything. Yeah, I, I think I would change the way that the time constraint works to make it... Give it a week. Make it like that it's... There's a time constraint, so does you, it's that nebulous time constraint. Like, something like a week. You say, like, uh, we could do the Jekyll and Hyde. I think that's a really good idea. Make it that he's stuck as Han. Yeah. That, like, he's stuck oh. in some kind of transformation. And because like, like he needs his potion or something. Yeah, and make it that he didn't make that potion. The <gasps> the oh. the, oh. Forced it on. the guy from Schloss Karamak was the one that invented it for him and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Yeah. And and the thing is, yeah. he can't. That's get That's so that much right. better. And like we yeah. did that in like and, five minutes. And and then the Jekyll because the Jekyll side is kind of like a little like a little more wicked kind of evil side mm -hmm. is like you know you get me off and I'll like talk to you about how you can get your friends back mind back or something you know something like that you know yeah, yeah. let make him sound like he's a villain and then he just drinks his potion and he becomes the friend and he's like oh you have no idea what it's like to be like that all this time. Yeah, it's like you know it like it overwhelms you with like anger and stuff or something like that you know it's like you, yeah. you're there but you're not there and I wanted to yeah. ta tell you but like there was that urge to like you know mega tangent but like yeah. that would be so much better than yeah it's presented. wow I can't believe I just fixed carrying crown and flash can uh, <laughs> and make slosh caramel a bigger dungeon the fuck slosh caramel is the worst design dungeon oh, I've ever I, 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 redesign it redesign it it's change a lot of the creatures bigger, inside of it bigger place less golems uh, less constructs. Uh, you can yeah. still have other security defenses or something. I, or like, I, I would have like one or two golems. I would probably have like a construct slash golem or whatever, like in the very beginning. But have it like really weak. So it's mm -hmm. like, you know, it's like I'm guarding this thing. You can't come in here. And then you fight it and realize, oh, they're like really strong or something. Yeah. Maybe we should come back with better equipment. Or like, I have to say, like, there are. They they like actual golems. Or, or they're, foreboding. They're, they're better co constructs. They're they're less yeah. annoying constructs. Like granted, they've added a lot more since then that are like mm -hmm. better for. Yeah. Yeah, but, but you could also have more foreboding. Like the yeah. dude that you meet, who's like, "Hey, the dude makes golems. Uh, you, you may want to get equipped before that." And literally, if the party doesn't know about it, have him tell you maybe you should get uh, this one type of sword. Maybe he has one, like a short sword version, it's like a like a cheaper version, yeah. like a less like no no like great swords or long swords, but yeah, like, like I have this adamantine dagger or something. Here you go, and then you have something. Yeah, there there's a lot of ways that you can still do it and make it a lot better. That you can still add a version of Slosh Karamak. There's certainly a lot to that. I feel like that needs a lot more editing as a dungeon, yeah. but there's like concepts yeah. that work there in the idea of it that Maybe. you know like. The, the make, concept is mostly fine. Yeah, make like you know, there's some enemies that also just like shouldn't shouldn't be in there. Mm -hmm. it, it's 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 a fuck you dungeon. Well. Like a a mummy really really doesn't make. I don't understand why that one's there. But there's a lot yeah, of fuck that, you. A that mummy and a mimic at the same time. Yeah, like the mimic 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 sign. Uh, mummy, however, is, shouldn't be there. Aranus, oh, the Aranus, Aranus is oh dumb. Oh my god, that one was awful. Mm -hmm. Especially because it's like, oh, are you playing a good character? Yes. You yeah. take double damage. Uh, the, I think the Basilisk, I think, is fine because he was, like, keeping as a pet. Yeah. Th there's a lot of things that he was experimenting on stuff, so you can kind of keep some of it there, and it kind of works. Yeah, that, that dungeon, I can imagine, if played poorly or strongly as a DM, 
is a TPK dungeon. Yes. There are so many things it, in there that could just annihilate the party, the, and that's, like, bad. It, it, the mummy, specifically, is, is the biggest Ooh. TPK. Yeah, because Ling almost died, basically, yeah. right? It was like, oh, you get mummy rod. In three you, days, mummy die. rod is, is death. Yeah, mm. it's like, oh, well, we need to leave the dungeon so I can get healed. The yeah. only way that mummy rod can be dealt with is you have to have an actual cleric, because you would have yep. been at the level the cleric could have cast the stuff to get rid of that. A yeah, specific cleric. Was... Can't have an oracle. Can't have anything else. You nope. need. You can't have a. You can't have a druid. You need a cleric to deal with that. <laughs> yeah, it's just yeah. I. I wouldn't put them on me enough. Um, but that got super side to me. Uh, yeah. I mean, like again. Yeah, honestly, I'd split the. Uh, we had uh, bad builds in that game. Mostly, yes. <laughs> There's a lot of bad things about characters in that game. Honestly, um, I, I. I. I can't tell if there was ever a good character. There was in there. there I, was better I can tell characters. you. I can tell you there was exactly uh, one, one whole good character. Mm. It was Which? the two, it was the the two sessions we had Cell with his giga <gasps> healer. Oh, oh, that's right. The sorcerer healer who got stabbed by a unicorn and given. Yeah, that because I, I also I love that character so much. <laughs> I I had also made the Arcanist, but the Arcanist was well mechanically fine i had oh. picked some role play choices to be a little bit more uh I, silly i made a basic like wizard in that because i i think i retired ling at one point I you just, retired I, ling I, and you, you played like an elf at some yeah point. i played like an elf wizard it's or fine. something yeah, yeah. No, which I, was just a regular character yeah. it was totally fine yes i'm sorry Cell, sells unicorn guy that's the best yeah. guy it was I, like I, the best so character good. He's just, he's like, yeah, I got, I got magic powers when this unicorn like impaled me with its horn. It hurt a bunch, but it healed me afterwards, and I got this magic power. So I'm like, what? Cell and I were on a voice call making that character for like four hours. Then he showed up for two sessions. Yeah, showed up for two sessions. I would love. Well, we we had that Azamar as well for a little bit. It was mechanically, mechanically pretty fine because I get it, Spider. Yeah, they were great. I think I think by the time we got more characters, that's where like experience, knowledge of Pathfinder yeah. had kind of come back. For those of the, us that, you know, we were we were better prepared for it. Because again, like it was one of those things that like I think I didn't help with characters, and that's something no. that's something that I think is part of this topic that we kind of we're doing a lot of tangents on, but it's important is you as the DM have to help people out when it yeah. comes to their characters. So if yeah. you're doing Pathfinder purely with new people. I will give this one sole piece of advice for you as a DM. Ban everything that's not in the core rule book. Uh, I'd give a core rule book and advanced players. Those, are those two? Everything that's in those? Fine. Yeah. Anything else that's weird and exclusive to adventures? No. Mm-hmm. That, that saves you so much on like uh, yeah. decision paralysis. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because a lot of the stuff introduced in the core book and the advanced players guide uh, mechanically are fine. And those were like the first two books they did, period. You know, yeah. they put out uh, It's, it's after three. that that they started doing the weird shit. Yeah. Like, I am totally going to play the Kitsune again because, damn it, I want to. But it's going to be in Pathfinder 2nd Edition mm. and I'm just going to play a Sorcerer. Yeah. Nice. Uh, Kitsune is kind of crap in Pathfinder 1st Edition, but I think they realized that because I think it was 3rd Edition or not 3rd Edition, 3rd Party. And I think the third party people or uh, Paizo themselves were like, hey, we like this, you know, but we're going to make it good now. Sune, I believe, were released um, officially. They in core. They're not core. They're like um, second or I, third. Be- I believe they are. I want to say they're from the TN book. Uh, let me... No, they're from the, the Advanced Race Guide. A- A- Ancestry yeah. Guide from second edition introduced to um, Sune. The problem yeah. with first edition Kitsune is they came out and then uh, in subsequent books didn't get any support or options so they're limited in like maybe four, like two or three alternative traits that they can but pick. But they're, they're also like exclusively a third party thing and I don't think Paizo supported it at all. So like yeah. it's it's like abilities and stuff are really lame. Yeah. It's like yeah, it you... has like racial feats and stuff and thematically they work. They're just garbage. Like, yeah. you look at, like, Azimer feats or Tiefling feats. It's like, oh, get all this extra, like, resistances or have wings or, you know, like, get magic. And it's like, these are all really cool. What does Kitsune have? Oh, um, 
you have a feet chain that's nine feet long, yep. and you get like two decent spells at them. But yep. by the time you get them, they're like one or two levels below what you can cast if yeah. you're just a sorcerer. I, I have to say, like, I I got the Kitsune in Pathfinder Wrath of Righteous. They have magic tail in there. Yes. I looked oh, no. at it and laughed. The Kitsune in Wrath of so Righteous bad. is bad. Um, don't don't use them. And, the, and I there's like archetypes. The there's the archetypes character is great, that give you that, and it's the, bad. It's, the fucking it's, it's a, class, the, the feed and con, it's a bad character. It's got we, it's it's it, it, it has like it's a weird two wizard. or three good spells in it. One of them is like invisibility, confusion, and I yeah. think like uh, dominate person or something. But dominate person, you get that at like level fourteen or level twelve Look, or something. They're like an illusionist, but guess what? I gave them all uh, evocation spells. Gave them uh, mm -hmm. spell penetration. Gross, I they were great, a lot better. Greater spell penetration, and because we're mythic now, mythic spell penetration. So yeah. now, fuck you, just uh, uh, just all. Uh, evocation spells all the time. I like Yeah, I bet you they're really good at killing people. Also, too. I I turned the um um freaking um Zen Archer uh, greater invisibility and that just murders everything. Oh jeez. <laughs> nice. Like here's Zen Archer, greater invisibility. Shoot everything with deadly right. deadly arrows. Uh look, I found uses for it. But yeah, no, like, I think that's the thing, is they give you some shitty builds for stuff in that game. Like, Kitsune in 1E so e was not supported in 2E, it's heavily supported. Yeah. yeah, like, do they have, um, like, the, the racial uh, spells and stuff are actually, like, good? Yeah. Um, your, like, your, your bonuses, like, your ASI kind of stuff, they're actually, like, not garbage. It's like, it, it feels like Paizo took it and said, Hey, thanks for like making this third party person. Now we're gonna make it and have it like not be grab crap, crap, you know. Yeah. I like I was gonna say, I think it's one of those things is that like they made a bunch of playable races in one E and they had a lot of interesting selections. But they were also like you know there there's certainly ones that are not like the others on this entire list that aren't great and stuff like this and they, they were some like, of them are like, holy crap. Yeah, some of these are good, some of these are just like, eh, they're kind of There's there. like a half dragon, half Irvin, which is like, I was really tempted to be like, hey, Tantus, can I play this? And it's like, I don't know. First of all, it's kind of strong. Secondly, why would you be in this area as this weird yeah. monster thing? And I'm like, oh, I, but it's like, it's dragony. It's I, my thing. I, I will tell you, um, Kobolds, Pathfinder First Edition, are maybe... Um, oh, one of the oh. worst experience of playing uh, because you you get so many negatives. Oh, oh you're so bad. So um, bad. but in second edition, uh, the negatives are heavily reduced, and you actually get options to to be good. You you get like some pretty good like co uh, cobalt abilities too. Yeah. So it's like, like you get uh, a very small negative, and like because you get this negative, here's this cool cobalt only thing you can do. Yeah, like I'll, I will say, had um. That one, like, really short 2E thing we did. Oh, Had that continued, um, my character would have eventually gotten a breath weapon. I think that... I, I was mega himbo fighter in that game. <laughs> I, I had, like... Hey, you married all... a kobold. <laughs> Apparently I did. I had, like, all strength and all con, and that was, was the character. I just, I just remember is we had depressed, depressed... Uh, monk who was like agnostic. Uh, the different wrong game. Uh, oh, that was, that was a five B game. That was the five B game. Shit. The, the Pathfinder one was. Was it just um, the three of you? There's three of us. There was the witch. Okay, so it was the witch uh, who got Zell, kidnapped. Was the witch? Yeah. So it was the witch who got kidnapped. Yeah. Um, we had <laughs> the completely normal human, and we had uh, uh, Kib the I, Cobalt who was a detective. Yeah. I actually was a normal human in that game, and that was the meme. Because every time I say I'm playing a normal human, I'm totally not. Like, there's a, in, in mm -hmm. Cell's game on Friday, I'm playing a Kitsune, and I'm like, I'm a normal human. And, and Momo, you're playing a reborn uh, human, technically? Yeah, reborn. Well, maybe. All I can uh, remember is who, who perfectly normal are. human tentacle. We, we yes. had we have a halfling, totally just a short human, and then we had a Goliath, uh, which we'll talk about in our next segment. Yeah. Uh, who's just a really big normal human? So it was like yeah. it's a human continent, and we're not. Playing but, yeah, we we're playing on the human continent, and none of us are humans. 
the, the halfling is the only one that. Oh, well, the halfling and the Goliath, because they're yeah. both on. The, they're the north and the. I'm technically uh, native to here. Yeah, I'm not. I'm like you're, the only no, person who's not you're, native. And you're a weirdo. I'm, in that game, I think I'm also mildly idiotic in that you game. You are a big dumbass in that game, too, but not to such a point where you're not useful like Ari. Yeah. Because like you're Ari, wisdom based. Ari is, <laughs> Ari is good at exploding things, yeah. and that's it. What's this game called? It's. Oh, here it is, Scar Times. I think. The thing I think about kobolds, because kobolds, their terrible stats are technically a leftover from 3rd edition. Yes. You could yeah. play one, it's just... It's, it's really hard, hard to play one. It's like, bad. I, I will say, um, and this honestly will probably remain the case for many, many, many years to come, because I don't like Rogue. Uh, the meme kobold, Kib, that's the only time I've ever played Rogue. Mm. It was for like, the, the two sessions where I, I memed as a dumbass. You were like Rogue Investigator, too. Was, I was Rogue with the detective background. <laughs> detective. Um, detective Cobalt. Detective he actually Cobalt. had a real. He actually had a really sad and tragic backstory, where like his, oh. where some adventurers like broke into his his like cave where he lived with his family. All of his family were like horribly slaughtered, but he this lived. Is Cobalt. Uh, yeah, because Cobalt. It actually says in the Tui book that Cobalt can actually live like a hundred years, but they die very early because adventurers kill them very often. Yeah. Uh, yeah, he had a very sad and tragic backstory as to why he wanted to be a crime fighter. Uh, uh, I, so I want to talk about another yeah. 5e character, and then maybe we should move on, because yes. it's, like, yeah. really late. Yeah, so I, I have in, one thing. So in the say. Friday game, yeah. I'm playing a witch. I'm a yes. white witch, so I'm a healer. Uh, I have no strength. I have good dexterity. Uh, I mean, average con, right? The 14. Mm -hmm. yeah. I have no <laughs> intelligence. Average 14. I yeah, well, my average. I'm basically always going to have 14 in Contra now on. Because I'm sorry, I like not dying, you know, okay? Um, I, I am kind of a dumbass. I have 10 intelligence. But because we just leveled up, and I have 20 wisdom at level 4. Because yeah. this character uh, has extra wisdom. And I have pretty good charisma at 14. Look. But again, I'm playing kind of a dumbass. So I have no intelligence skills at all. Mm -hmm. But I have stealth... I have a little bit of persuasion and deception. I have really good insight. I have really good medicine. Uh, I'm very perceptive. Like, the character is bad at intelligence things, but really good at wisdom and dex things. Yeah. So, like, it, that that negative they have of, like, being kind of a dumbass is, is way better offset by my other skills. Um... I think it's the thing that, like, it, it proves, this is it's one thing that I say can prove that, like, one of them, that can prove that anything can work. You know, yes, you, you encounter lots of builds and concepts which don't work, and it will happen. But you can make things work is, I will always remember, in a game I was running, it was uh, 3.5, someone played a Kobold Warlock. Hmm. He was the best character oh, of the group. Yeah. He was Crowley, the Kobold Warlock. Who was known for a couple of things? Um, one, they were fighting a uh, like a uh, like a mid boss, and because uh, Shatter worked a lot differently in 3.5. Um, oh no! He shot. He, he kept shattering the guy's equipment until the guy was just fist fighting the kobold and not doing a lot of damage. Because he's a kobold, he can't do anything to fight back. And then eventually, he just like um, he shot. He's like he's like well, there was nothing else left. I shatter his pants, and I roll the, I roll the check, and he's like, well, he's not stunned, because you stunned if you shattered some equipment he's holding, and like, he's not stunned, but you shattered his pants. This is a big old naked man punching you. <laughs> uh, I want to put a kobold in my next game now, a kobold warlock who's just like super cursed. Uh, he also um, was known for, like, he ate uh, garbage out of trash, so like there was like one time he just, connoisseur. He was just going through. He's like, he's like, what are you making a will save for? He's like, I found a rotting apple covered in a little poop. Man of culture, <laughs> and, trash eating. And eventually they found a fez, so he just like put a fez on his head. So <laughs> he just was a, a kobold in a fez. Uh, so. Speaking of eating trash, Mama, help me make a raccoon race. <laughs> <laughs> And, and, and the, uh, their biggest negative flaw is that they love garbage and you have to make a will yeah. save for e garbage. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, uh, fine. I'll put it in the Underdark, sure. Oh, hell yeah. Underdark raccoons, let's go. I mean, like, honestly, I will always remember then the one line the other character gave is like, Oh, Crowley, 
You're my, you're the feather in my hat of pimpness. Fair enough. <laughs> I was like, what the heck is that line mean? Anyway, we should talk about the games we had yeah. this week. Did anybody yeah, have anything on a Saturday? Saturday? No, I don't do anything on Saturdays. I, I don't normally do anything. We had a... Uh, I did something to, today. Well, oh. yes. Uh, you did something. We did. Today is Sunday. You did something this Sunday, Sunday yes. and you did something. Because yeah, we're, we're, we're a day off from our normal yeah. time. Um, so I, I was. That yesterday. No, it was today. Oh, okay. It was very early in the morning. Oh, um, fair enough. So I uh, was invited to be in a session of a really good friend of mine's game. Um, and I was told, you can make whatever you want, I'll make it work. So I, you know, the little hamster in my my head went to spinning as I was watching an Elder Scrolls for Oblivion Let's Play, and I'm like, what if I just make Sheogorath as a character? Like, just that level of insanity, right? So I picked Changeling, because they're, like, my favorite race in the position. Um, and my character introduction, because they were going to go to a cave, because they're... A companion of theirs had been kidnapped by a bunch of frog people called Grub, who are mechanically kind of shit. Mm-hmm. Uh, so they were like going to go to that cave. So my introduction, uh, which really set the tone for my character, uh, was they walk through the woods uh, and see a figure talking to two horribly mutilated frog, who are both very much dead. And uh, the introduction was me talking to them as if they were alive and nobles. Uh, because I really needed them, their help, to find their home so I could talk to their frog king to get some cheese. <laughs> okay! Sometimes uh, you just need to talk to the frog because, king. Because uh, my character, actually, uh, from the Fae Plane of Madness, so literally an insane person. Uh, yep. uh, so we, the entire session was mostly murdering frog. However, I also had a rod of one. I can see where this goes. So, um, a bunch of the frog people were grouped up in the cave, being really defensively, because we entered the cave really loudly. So I did a number of things. First off, I cast um, one of the new dragon spells. It's like, you roll a d4 and random effect happens. Uh, incapacitated all of them immediately. Uh, pointed my rod at them, used it on the next turn, uh, rolled the like 2% chance fireball. All right. So I killed uh, most of the Grung in one turn. Because they are CR one fourth. <laughs> fireball. Uh, it's always yeah. the solution. Apparently. Trap fireball. Rod of Wonders. Very fun. I didn't get any of the dumb abilities of it. I mostly only got the useful ones. Oh, I need to look that up now so I can curse. Uh, cell there's with one it. of them. I've already cursed where... Cell with it. It's too late. I gave him a Rod of Wonder in, uh, in, in <laughs> Wednesdays. <Yeah. laughs> He hasn't used it. Yet. I'll have a Rod of Wonder in two different games. One of so, the no. um, <laughs> yeah, one one of the abilities on the Rod of Wonder in fifth edition, which is really good, is like one of the lower percent chances of uh, I believe the wording is you are stunned for one round thinking you've done something amazing. I was really hoping to get that one. Um, I also played a bard, naturally. So I had all the charisma. Oops, all charisma. Um yeah, so insane charisma. Literally an insane person. So we fought our way through all these drunk, murdered all of them. Uh, the party has a tabaxi. Tabaxi almost died because there's some kind of scrub lord who doesn't have a rod of random events. Uh, so we talked to literally uh, the frog prince from uh, every fairy tale. Man cursed to be a frog. Uh, and he gives them their their... The people back, uh, I get the cheese I was questing for, naturally, <laughs> as one does. <laughs> I needed the, so I, so context, I needed the cheese because the, and I just, I was told to make up as much shit as I wanted to for this one, so it was a huge mistake on the DM's <laughs> part. Uh, I, so I needed the cheese because the Queen of Madness had a contest to see who could kill her in the most creative way, and she loves cheese, so I needed the cheese to kill her so I could use her for the throne. <laughs> All right. I, what was my stupid comment that I made? I made I made a cheese comment. It was like a Skyrim joke or something. 
I don't remember what it was anymore. It was if if I hadn't gotten the cheese at the end of the dungeon, I would have like flavored oh. picking up some shit like not the cheese I was looking for and just done the the Shea Garath cheese for everyone. Looked at him like no cheese for no one and left. <laughs> I made a Final Fantasy XIV joke about the golem fight, where you're questing for a bunch of random miscellaneous crap, so these dudes can have a party, yeah. because they think you're going to die when you go fight it. Yeah. They're like, we want you to have a last meal, because you're going to die when you fight this thing. That was my joke. That was so good. Um, <laughs> yeah, so we got the uh, stuff, uh, left the cave. Uh, I gave them a MacGuffin item that's like a really weird eyeball inside of a gem. It'll be important for them later. I'm not actually in that game. I was just there for doing this. <laughs> um, and then I just fuck off after that. I walk into a tree and just vanish and leave everyone completely confused. <laughs> and then at the end of the session, when they go to sleep, uh, I just, like in their head, just told them something really fucking creepy and disturbing for them to have to deal with for the rest of the campaign. Though. The character's never going to show up again. You know wow. what would have been funnier, though? Casting sleep on them. Oh, God. They're too high level <laughs> for that to work. Ugh. Yeah, so uh, I, I basically just ruined, like, someone's well-planned out encounters with a random misrod. Oh, they're going to die next time with that. That's know? not my problem. Yeah. I, I love that. I think I even told you that. It's kind of like, who cares if any of them yeah, die? Like, because <laughs> you're just like, I'm, I'm here for some cheese. I'm here for cheese. I don't need anything else. Uh, oh. that was a, that was a pretty interesting thing. Uh, so we, last Sunday we did have a, uh, Cyberpunk game though, too. We did have a Cyberpunk game. You went to Dwarfland and did oh. some stuff. Um, you didn't do a lot in greatest. Dwarfland, but what you did do was you got a little bit of information. Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, because you were talking to a gnome with, like, no wisdom or intelligence... <laughs> Suggested, hey, do this like you know, totally legal thing instead of the illegal summoning. And his takeaway was, right, scam tourists legally. Got it, Mayla. I mean, I was like, it's better. <laughs> I think I like rolled a persuasion or something on him, and I got like a twenty-one or you something. You did, yeah. And you also read his mind. Yeah, I also read his mind. <clears throat> he was too he stupid was, to was... know that happened. Like mechanically, he should have known that happened. But I looked at his intelligence at an eight and was like, he's not going to know. What yeah, he, he was actually just a dumbass. He's a dumb. He was Steve from that old game. Oh hell yeah! I gotta bring Steve back. He was just Steve. <laughs> I'll, um, I'll bring Steve back as like a forty-year-old man who's a stoner. Yeah. And then you went on boat to Magic Island, Texas-shaped place. It's not Texas shaped like size. Texas. It's just about the size of Texas. It's just, it's an island the size of Texas. <laughs> Which is like, holy crap, Pretty this big. thing is huge. Um, but you went into the magical vault. You got some some minor magic items. Uh, you bypassed some traps. Uh, and then you found a sarcophagus. Yeah. Th this is the game with Ari the Dumbass. Or yeah, this is mm -hmm. the game with Ari the Dumbass. And Jenrik the really generic. Yeah, Jenrik, Jenrik the, the normal Jenrik guy. And also the Dumbass. Chamber <laughs> the Psychopath. Yeah, it, it's it's a dumbass, another dumbass, uh, a crazy person, and an old man. That's <laughs> and the, the part. An old man. Yeah. That's the part. Like, uh, my character shouldn't be a dumbass, but I'm just like, I don't... I they kind I of like, are. It's like, I feel like with Jenrik, it's, he's too stunned by all of the stupid shit that's happening around him. And also, he just doesn't know how to process it. He, he's a country boy in the big city. <laughs> yeah. so he's like, here's all my country boy ideas. And it's like, those won't work here. <laughs> I think that's probably what it is. It's sort Real of like fish out of water. I, I'm very fish out of water, so I'm like, I have the wisdom, so it's sort of like, if you convince um, me, I'll go for the right thing. But it's like I need information, and when I don't have it, I'm just like, yeah, I, I don't know. Well, um, in the country, we did this. It's like, okay, cool. In the country, did you open up sarcophaguses and offer it your blood? No. <laughs> this is the greatest session ever. In this um, case. Yeah. So this sarcophagus has appeared in previous. Uh, they opened it. There was a corpse inside. Shocker. That's what's usually in sarcophagus. It was, uh, it was um, like a shriveled husk. Yeah. You were having the moral debate whether you should bring this back or not. And then Shilmer is like, just strolls up, ignores all of you, and starts doing it. Yeah. I, I, I was tempted because my character, again, is kind of a dumbass. Um, yeah. But then Shilmer was like, here, have a bunch of blood. I think I gave I gave magic points. You gave magic. I added so both worked because technically both would work. 
Yeah, both technically work. Uh, uh, so yeah. I, I also you, tried to give her a magical yeah, long so you, you, stick. You gave her a stick, and she just kind of threw it. Because <laughs> her hand was open. So it's like, I put the stick in her hand, and then she like throws the stick. Oh, I help her out. You know, I, I took her hand and like mm-hmm. helped her out. Yeah. Um, so yeah, you resurrected uh, for this the second time in this universe. Uh, a, a, <laughs> a, a very ancient being who of immense power. Um, who then proceeded to sash you for waking her up. Yeah, apparently she, like, doesn't like being alive or something. Yeah, that's weird, I know, right? Um, she, uh, <laughs> it's the closest thing she can get to death is going to sleep <laughs> for a thousand years. She only got, like, 80 years this time. Uh, but then oh. you left. And your boss is, is uh, not mad, but disappointed in all of you. <laughs> I feel Look. like she's not mad at me for once, she's mad at everyone else. Yeah, she's very disappointed in everyone. Just, like, please stop resurrecting, please. <laughs> yeah, uh, Ch- uh, Chiyomaru resurrected uh, their dead grandsire, yep. which is, like, half or, like, a quarter or something of the, their personality, um, and then yeah. resurrected an ancient um, bunny. Yeah, mechanically, uh, the ghost that follows you around is one-eighth of a person's soul, meaning they're one-eighth the level that they were in life, meaning they're actually useless. <laughs> that explains a lot. Yeah. Uh, in life, they were, like, level civ- 16 or 17. In in ghost form of this, they're, like, level 2. Oh, no! They're, like, level, th- like level oh, 2 or 3. That does really... That's why she's not, that's why she's not helpful. <laughs> Explains so much of why she's not helpful. It's just sort of like she doesn't know anything. Oh, God. she has the experience, but not the power. Yeah, she has none of the power to help. You, just all of the memories and experience, and none none of the like knowledge of how to apply any of this experience, because <laughs> she can't interact with things. She's a ghost. I'll make her not a ghost, maybe. I mean, I, the fucking super powerful archmage of crone of ants you unleashed on the world can probably do that. Yeah, well, I'll help her, because she needs a friend. Yeah, and now you're gonna probably go kill a wizard, honestly. Yeah, I got a new cool spell that's just summoning the void, and just madness. Oh, that's and I'm gonna fair. use it on yeah. them. And if anybody goes into it, well, I, I'm using it on you guys, too. Good luck. Good luck. <laughs> yep, you gotta go kill a wizard. Enjoy, enjoy the madness. That's that game. That's that game. That's all I can say about this point. That's Any, what happened in that game. Anything on a Monday? Um, Monday. No, I don't think. No, so. I think we had Star we had Star Wars on Tuesday. We had Star Wars, yeah. where you continued to infiltrate the big super star destroyer. Um, and then your train blew up, and you're being trashed by something who I, I don't know. Right I, again. I don't know why, but. Your go-to reactions to everything is to sass it. <laughs> Look, I think that's my character's way of being like, <laughs> like I, I'm not, I'm not filled with anger. I'm not filled with hatred. The dark side gives, me, the dark side gives me sass. I'm just like, I'm gonna edit your character sheet and have your flaw just be sassy bitch. <laughs> Make alignment. Uh... Uh, neutral <laughs> sassy. <laughs> neutral sassy. Um, because like it's just, it's just no one, no one gets to. None of these villains will ever talk to you because you just you just sass them. I and shoot then they, first, and they try and to the other kill one you. Sasses. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Look, we got shoot first, yeah, sass but, later. But once again, Eve was correct in shooting first. Everyone else is like. It's probably nothing. You're just seeing things. Don't yeah. worry about it. Those explosives are probably there the whole time. And it's like, stop being stupid. The ten intelligence character is smarter than the party. <laughs> uh, yeah, she, you know, I mean, you, you got like half of what her plan was. And then you, for whatever reason, decided, oh, these explosives placed on these tracks at the end of this tunnel definitely are for when we walk past them. Not in case the first explosives fail. We had, a, we had a perception check, and then we saw explosives, so it's like, hey, those are probably for us. I'm gonna snipe them with this gun this I have. so sassy. <laughs> Too much sass. 
Um, and then and then she was like crawling around invisible. Yeah. And every time I spotted her, I would shoot horribly miss, and no one else did anything. We never it's saw her. Like, 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 none what of are us you doing? None of us saw her. Was the problem? We're like, but well, you can still shoot. Where I saw it. No one did anything it's except like, for Eve. It's just like, what are you doing? Why are you shooting? There's someone following us. They're like a well, visible shimmer. No. I didn't He's... see it. Donald, I can't either. No, see, there's one person who can't shoot, and that's Sivril, because he literally has zero chance of ever hitting this. Thing. I, I, I have... mean, you could use a force power in her location. Like I, uh, spell. Most most of my decent LA spells would have also like just start lightning bolting. Would have hurt lightning all bolt. our my allies. Yeah, just just channel the the evil lightning force everywhere. Just start unlimited power. Let powering the sass through. Let the sass yeah. flow through you. Um, yeah, and then you made it to like the bridge of a star destroyer, uh, where everyone was fucking dead. Yeah. Um, and then you like wanted to talk to this person, but like you Jen just immediately started sassing. I don't think I sassed that time. No, Cell started sassing. Cell <laughs> was mildly sassy. And then and then they were kind of like, it's like, hey, do you want to say something that's like, fuck you, die. Like, why? <laughs> and then I yeah, it was her. like, she was like, Cell was like, well, why are you doing this? And then she was like, well, why do you think I'm doing this? And Cell was like, just fucking tell me. <laughs> yeah, just, why don't you tell me? <laughs> no, the thing is, I don't think that was sassing. I think that was just... His character's an idiot. He's just an idiot. He's an idiot. It's like, well, well, why don't you tell me? I, I don't know. <laughs> and, and then it's kind of like, oh, your shot goes right through her. It's like, oh, she's a hologram. And this ship's probably going to explode and yeah. kill us on it. And she was just yeah, I, 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 You know, I did the Watchmen thing where it's like, you know, they already did the shit 20 minutes ago and sucked off. Uh -huh. So once again, Eve was correct. <laughs> yes, Eve was gotta, correct. She's gonna stop giving villains time to talk. <laughs> Granted, she was never gonna be up there because I had to extend the, the game by one session because someone had yeah, to miss. Yeah, we were down session. a player. Uh, but now you're gonna go fight her at the center of the galaxy. Yeah. Hopefully, there won't be <clears> any <throat> shark people to help her. But I guess they would try to kill her. Shark so. people. I'm yeah, the, the fucking um, flash raiders are just big shark <laughs> people. Yeah. Oh, but don't worry, we'll bomb the planet slightly and kill all the flush raiders and Again? then fight her. We've already done that. Well, we shot it with I'll, I'll, a I will be 100% honest. When you started blasting, because you unloaded like a couple of volleys into what you saw, you uh, you took down a, an entire village. Good. They're horrible monsters. Even you you, blew, bad you blew up an entire village of flesh raiders. <laughs> They're horrible monsters. But this time, we have um... I don't forget what it's called, but it's a big cruiser. It's like a Republic cruiser. Got, we have a, a CIS yeah. ship this got a time. Big, you got a big fleet that may or may not yeah. be helpful. No, it's not going to be helpful, but it's no, going to show up. But because be we're going to fucking... Uh, if anything leaves that planet that's not us, it's going to die. <laughs> that's fair, yeah. Um, <laughs> Ira. Yeah, it's like, that's going to end. Uh, that's going to end this week, regardless. Yeah. I'm going to go fight her at the center of the galaxy. That's going to be dumb. Yep. <clears throat> It'll be fine. Don't worry about it. You had pirates, right? We did yep. have pirates. Had pirates. Uh, they explored most of a, uh, a, a, a probably. Well, they they found out it was definitely cursed. It right? absolutely is cursed. Yeah. No oh, hell yeah. We love curses. Definitely cursed um, uh, fortress. Yeah. Uh, and oh, they learned. On the island? Yeah, they're on the island. Uh, they learned that. <laughs> um, Yes, it was originally a Chalaxian fortress, but it seems like a bunch of pirates moved in at some point in time. Mm -hmm. Not sure when. Part of this. We learned um, another important uh, thing, um, and uh, it's that uh, face spiders suck. Face yes, spiders. Yes, face spiders are awful. <laughs> no, I, they were yeah. awful in Carrion Crown too. I believe one of them showed up or yeah, almost killed it wasn't someone. Great. It's like, it's invisible. It's like, all right, like, I guess we're ready in action if it shows up, because you could do that in Pathfinder. Yep. And that's it. That's it. That was uh, every that, turn. That's, yeah. Um, mm -hmm. yeah. Well, they killed a couple of them, and one of them, it died horribly, and it's like huge pile of ichor just Yeah, because it had like dumped, 200 pounds or some shit. It just oh, dumped crap. on top of uh, Yakul and Re uh, uh, Revia. Revia. Um, yeah, and you know, then we found out that it's cursed because the wizard tried to send himself into Dream World. Yeah, and he apparently cursed? something he something apparently went wrong, so we turned into like a ghost and like yeah. Uh, 
Right. What you don't know, because none of you stayed the night there, uh, and uh, every night a uh, a crew of pirates comes to defend the fortress of ghost pirates. I was hoping you were going to say he haunts your dreams like an asshole. Well, they're he just awesome. shows up in your dreams and like taunts you and is like crazy. That's the no, animated like, dreams. Yeah, and, no, uh, actually, that are, that um, actually, he just turns up in your dreams and uh, just sasses you and calls you Neville Idiot and then he fucks off. Uh, look, his, I, name, I, his name is Sivril. <laughs> <laughs> and he's very old and he looks like a horrible monster. I mean, I look perfectly fine for Star Wars, thank you. <laughs> uh, no, it was, uh, it was, uh, it was fine. Yeah, we learn, uh, also that, uh, animated dreams and face fighters are natural allies, apparently. <laughs> Well, when they're working for a hag, apparently, like, a hag's like, you know, there's face spiders, animated dreams, you guys go work together. They're like, really? Are you sure? Yes. Man, I go don't do like my that bitties. guy. He, like, you know, appears and disappears in reality. Also got a weird... It's a spider with a human oh. face. I don't want to work with him. Hags like, don't have an HR department, so deal with it. <laughs> Look, I'm pretty sure one of them, like, the animated dream's like a horrible monstrosity, it's so it's just... pretty something... ugly. It's just like, it's like, an, it's like your worst nightmare made flesh, yeah. it's sort of like, I don't even like that one, and it looks like, it just looks like a face monster, and I'm like, but you're even worse, what are you talking about? No, oh, no, I look beautiful, don't worry about it. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, uh, like, I, I gotta be honest, uh, th there are certain things that they mention in this book that might be in a, a future book? I don't know. Because there's certain things I just I was looking at, and I'm like, uh, you, I don't think you're supposed to face the hag, but, like, the hag is supposed to be maybe around or something? I don't I know. Like I like the don't... hag's a future problem. And it not might be a future world. problem. Like, because, honestly, <clears throat> like, you know... Uh... Find one to your boat when you aren't there and eat your crew. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's normal. No, the dwarf stops it with his... He just starts saying nerd shit and she leaves and gets bored. <laughs> no, nerd things are my only weakness. And where, the hell did you, where the hell did you come from? <laughs> I was here well, all along. Don't worry about it. Yeah, she's going to get back to her hag hut and then occasionally this dwarf is going to keep showing up from somewhere. He's got a, a trap door of... He's like a, what is it? It's like a... I'm trying to think of it. It's like not... Dimension door because dimension door is only like a small mm -hmm. thing. He has like planar dimension door, <laughs> where any any trap doors he can open. No, no, no. Like he has I, like, he has like a. Oh man, I don't know what it would be. No, no, I, I got the item he has right. He has an adamantine, adamantine trap door of planar travel. <laughs> He's very buff. He can open it and carry it. Uh, and then we had a Thursday, which we did have wrath. Went okay. It went, it went wrath. I mean, you. Side quest? No, kind it's technically well. I think I was there for part of it. It's and kind I of no the main quest, but also kind of a side quest. Yeah, it's sort of like there was like a big boat that showed up and was like, "I'm evil," and then the party just like left or something. Uh, I'm not sure. Maybe I, I don't think a boat showed up because I showed up a little late, and that's what the that's what I got vibe wise. I'm like, I don't know um, what's going on. Well, Kaz has a big evil looking boat now. Yeah. Because uh, he, he, like, rebuilt a uh, He airship. rebuilt a fucking Phyrexian Wednesday. airship. Which, yeah. by the way, are, like, Nazis. So... Oh! Basically, they, like, driving around in a panzer. Uh, they're a combination... evil Hindenburg. They're, like, a combination of Nazis with the Borg from Star Trek. Oh! Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's basically... The Borg's fear. <laughs> yeah. It's their, their founder is basically very Hitler-y. Yeah. You know, Yogg Amazing. And, uh, you know, uh, he basically was like, you know what I can invent instead of, like, you know, the other horrible things? I'm going to invent, uh, totally, uh, <laughs> you know, the Borg. There you He's go. He's going to invent nanomachines, son. So the Borg, like, shapes for their ships. So it's yeah. a flying swastika. <laughs> <laughs> and that's some cut contact from Star Trek that really should have made it in the show. Uh, no, I thought that was uh, History of the World Part 2. With, uh, <laughs> with Jews in space versus, uh, versus the Nazis, oh, I guess. Oh, no. That's a fucking movie, dude. I, I, well, that wasn't an actual movie, but I remember the no, end of History Part like 1. It, it, was, it, was, uh, it was the end of History of the World Part 1. They did a preview for Part 2 and never yeah. Part 2. Yeah. <laughs> Boy, that movie's so good. It's... it's well, you know, uh, uh, there's... there's well, only Mel Brooks can get away with this shit, man. 
Is he he's not push. I get, well, he just got old. He's also, like, in almost 100 years old. Yeah, I mean, like, he, he, he doesn't really want to do anything anymore. He, he's, he's like, I'm old. I'm just going to sit here and be, like, old at this Let's point. Let's sit here with all of my money. <laughs> just sit here with all of my money and just, you know, All relax. of my money and renown. Uh, all this merchandising. Space balls. <laughs> <clears throat> but, um... So, yeah, I mean, Children of Adam went, okay, they're up in the, like, they're basically in Antarctica, and they visited yeah. the one area of Antarctica that was, like, a little to the south, and so it was, like, you oh, know, right. actually yeah. had temporal, uh, actually temperate enough to, like, have some people live there. Yeah. And then, like... You're gonna, you're gonna have your pregnant, hot elf wife show up, and she's like, I, I don't think I should do that. <laughs> I was, I, like... So I wasn't actually gonna have her show up. <laughs> I mostly asked if she had any advice, and it turns out, no, she didn't, because she's not a cold druid. <laughs> yeah, she's an ocean tree. Oh Look, well, you should was, probably know that. I wasn't going to have there. the guy know Nim until you mentioned something, so I just added that in, and it was much more hilarious. It was very funny. <laughs> just like, what has Nim done this time? <laughs> <laughs> he <hasn't> done anything. <laughs> it wasn't it was him. Us. It was these three idiots. <laughs> it, was, it was these idiots. Uh, that was much more entertaining than what I was planning, honestly. But I, it, it worked. It worked out well. I, I'm here to entertain. Yeah. Because God knows, no one else in this party's gonna do it. Oh, God, you know, Kaz is gonna plan something like you know, apocalyptic or something. I don't know. I'm gonna blow up the world now with this horrible artifice. Yeah. It's, it's fine because I'll be alive. <laughs> he he is, really won't. <laughs> that is. That seems to be his opinion a lot of times. <laughs> That's why I, I said it that way. I'm just gonna light Kaz on fire. And let, let what happens happen. It's 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 gotta be for the best at some point in time. I cast mean, grease on the floor near him first, or under uh, him specifically. <clears throat> so yeah, uh, did anybody have anything on a Friday? Uh, yeah. yeah, you can talk about Friday. Oh, you're gonna make me talk yeah. about it? I'm a dumbass in that game. And also, you did a lot of things. No, I, I didn't. What do you mean? I didn't cause anything to happen no. in that game. I didn't cause character <laughs> death with my decisions. <laughs> no, no. Oh, I wasn't talking about that. I wasn't gonna throw that on or you on the bus. I was mostly talking about the start of the session when we went um, to your grave. Yeah, we went to the place where my character died thirty years ago. And then you found something. And I found a shiny rock that I didn't know shit about. I just yeah, like pocket. you like failed to check and like no one saw you really pick it up or cared <laughs> because no one really knows what's like going on. It's no. just kind of like, yeah, we're here at this cave, I guess. And no, then, like, I had you were like, ship. Yeah, you I went to a like, corner and picked up a rock and left. You, you were like quiet, didn't explain anything. It's like, my character is just kind of like, I kind of don't care. <laughs> and if it's important, you'll explain it. Yeah, so that's why just... they didn't say anything. And then we traveled for like a week. Fucking quietly, 12 days. And never talked, apparently. Yeah, we never spoke to each other. Which, uh, I mean one because it was just kind of like I I didn't think of it because well I'm playing like kind of a semi antisocial character and I figured the other people in the game will like say something if we if we like talk to each other no one did so it's just like I guess we just silently traveled for like a week <laughs> like six days or it was six yeah, days yeah, it we was traveled for six days way too much travel time. Look, I I usually just assume it's just the small talk like they have and like you yeah. know. Path, the Pathfinder of oh. video games, where they just like say stupid vacuous shit, and I'm like, yeah, you know? Yeah. Um, Remember that one time I learned that spell of Explode Goblin? Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was a really good spell when we were fighting goblins. Very specific spell. <laughs> I'm gonna make that a spell now. Just, <laughs> just blow up goblin. Yeah, it's gonna be Explode Goblin. It'll be it'll be stronger than other spells, but because it's specifically only against goblins, it's you know, like, no, you, you make it make it disintegrate, but it only targets goblins. Yeah, it's disintegrate, but only go disintegrate goblin. <laughs> the spell. Um, God, but um, yeah, we ran into a wagon on the road, which was obviously and I'm just kind of like, <laughs> well, I mean, it's just like they're like regular dudes, just like standing around. So it's like, yeah. all right. Uh, so they're just like mildly suspicious. Well, four armed people walk up to you. I, I assume, well, obviously they're going to be like a little suspicious and on edge because four armed people just walked mm -hmm. up to you. Mm -hmm. And then it's like, hey, we'll like help you repair your wagon or something. And so uh, I, I read, at, I, I gave a tarot reading to our good undead, not undead friend. Legally not and undead. Rolled, and I rolled a nat one. So yeah. I joked and said, uh, your future looks grim. 
Boy, were you right. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it turned out to be true because um, the the what it, what it sounded like. What we could because the the <clears throat> wagons like closed or whatever, and it sounded like there was like a young mm -hmm. person, like a young kid yep. in there, like being like yelled at by their father or like not maybe not physically abused but like you know like verbally abused or something yeah and so our goliath uh is like i don't like this and so was gonna like start some shit to try and like maybe not personally es escalate the situation but like try and start something to maybe try and like figure out what's going on and like failed the check and then uh, the other the, the guard man like failed to like stop them mm -hmm. so it like made the check like it was like a double failure basically yeah. so then the guy inside who's like this wizard is like I'm gonna kill you for rub like shaking my cart and it's like holy crap dude chill out um, yeah and uh, well he didn't kill us no there was um, a big big fight um, three of the party was fine yeah people that were at range and not um, next to two the cleric lives. died because um, honestly kind of just put himself in a real shit position it, it was it was a <clears throat> deadly encounter and they were like evil characters like straight evil yeah it... because um, the, like the <clears throat> thing is that there's like if one or two things were different the character wouldn't have died but because the combat happened like so fast in the situation, it's just kind of how it played out that way. But they moved between three people, and then got flanked and beat up by a spy, which has sneak attacks, and a veteran, which has like two attacks. They could have potentially had three, but Cell was being kind, and because the guy had a zero movement speed, Cell was like, well, he doesn't have a move action to grab a weapon even though that's not how 5e works. So he was being kind and not giving this dude three attacks, which is what he would have had. Um, but I think he was able to do two hand attacks instead, so it kind of offsets it. Um, and so when the cleric went down, the spy was like, hey, I'm going to kill your friend if you don't let us go. And it's kind of like, I'm like, I was like, if you like walk away, you know, then I'll heal him and you guys can leave or whatever. And then he's like, I'm not going to do that. It's like, well, then I guess you want to die. And then um, he died. Because uh, our blood mage, not blood mage, blood, blood uh, what is your class? <sighs> oh, um, uh, I forget what mom's class is. They're the, they're the Matt Mercer thing. Blood something. Anyway, yes. I don't, I don't uh, know. They, they shot him with this uh, like blood enchanted light crossbow and just instantly killed him. But because the veteran guy uh, was rooted in place, he only had attacks on our down character and so he just killed our friend. So he, he died. Um, and then he died and then the wizard came out threatening a noble. So it wasn't a kid at all. And I was just like, oh, it's not a kid. Well, that means uh, our Goliath kind of died for no reason because he thought it was a kid in there. And so he's like, if you don't let me go, I'll kill this noble. Which, my character doesn't care about some human noble. I don't know if any of their party cared. But basically kind of like, yeah, okay, I will let you go. So he has to let go of the noble to get on the horse. So I'm like, yeah, I read you in action. So when he lets go of the noble, I cast Magic Missile at him. Mm. Um, and I killed him. And uh, that was the Friday game. Our, our our good boy cleric got absolutely murdered by some very, very evil and aggressive people. It wasn't good boy enough. No. Unfortunately, uh, bad positioning and, uh, you know, bad rolls. He didn't have a shield equipped, which would have, like, stopped one of the attacks. Mm. Um, I think, the, I think the sneak attack would have missed instead, so he would have had his stones endurance still, because he had to use the stones endurance on the sneak attack roll, which just negated the sneak attack damage, because it was like a 7. Um, uh, what class are you, Momo, in that game? You're a I'm blood a, something. I'm a blood hunter, currently. Blood well, hunter. kind of. Yeah, you're a weird thing. Um, I was just explaining how you murdered the spy, and then the guy yeah. who was bound by your blood stuff... Yeah, I'm a blood. Yeah, that's unfortunate. Um, 
Unfortunately, because of I'm sacked from a blood hunter and I'm constantly doing damage to myself. Oh, that's uh, right. It, had... it gives me a uh, lightning syndrome of I don't want to be anywhere near the fire. <laughs> yeah. Well, just take the tough feet. We leveled up. Uh, well, the thing is, uh, <laughs> I've taken a level of paladin. Oh! Well, you. S are we still getting our ASI? We are getting. I took, and I put the ASI into. Uh, one into Charisma, one in Con, and now I have like. I have like 45 HP now. But we're, we're getting ASI and FIDA. For I didn't know we were getting... So didn't tell me that. <coughs> yeah, yeah. I so I, I still don't know what feed to take. Um, I don't know if you're going to take... I might just take tough. More I, HP. If, so take damage for you? Play. Yeah. Um, because definitely Bloodhunter's big downside is you constantly doing damage to yourself. Yeah, and that's an extra 40 <clears> points. Yep. Um... Just one blood hunter attack on you. <laughs> yeah. you just always roll max damage. <laughs> but um, I mean, I can say it because it's not like yeah, you know, it doesn't really matter because you've seen Cell do this before, right? I am gonna probably slowly start replacing blood hunter levels with paladin levels when story shit comes up for my character personally. That kind of makes <clears throat> sense if you're trying to like undo because your because I because the the thing I'm going with and I did talk to Cell this little bit. I'm trying to become. Uh, not ever born anymore and become what I'm supposed to be. I'm not. I can say it doesn't fucking matter. Uh, you can probably. Uh, dude's Nazmar. Oh. Or was. And then he died and now he's reborn. So he's trying to get that back. And as okay. that happens, I'm going to be doing Paladin levels. And I think Cell and I have worked out that every time I get a bit of quote unquote humanity back, I can swap a Blood Hunter level for a Paladin mm. level. So it happens a little bit faster. That's kind of a cool concept, I like that. I, I, I love being able to use, like, a plot to, like, either for, like, someone to take, like, I'm taking this class now, and it's because of this story reason. Or, like, have a reason for them to, like, re-level. Like, for example, it's like, oh, I'm not super enjoying mm -hmm. a Oracle. I'd like to become a sorcerer instead. And in Pathfinder, it's like, yeah, sure, you can do that. Just make a new character, because the amount of time you need to retrain is mm -hmm. basically the entire time of the adventure. So, here's a new character sheet. You can name them the same thing, I guess. I mean, like, honestly, like... <laughs> it depends what you're retraining and how far along you are. Yeah, yeah. but, like... And it's still for, like, <clears throat> for Divine stuff, um, it can easily be hand waved as magical god bullshit, but for like sorcerer and, and shit, it's a little harder. Yeah, like Pathfinder, it's like I I'm glad it has the rules for it, but depending on the adventure you're in, it's basically make a new character most of the cases. Yeah, it's like that sucks. Yeah. I want to play this character. Five E's retraining rules. I don't think it um, has that. They do, but they're not great, and they're not very uh. like <clears throat> not baked in. It's more suggestions. It says if someone wants to... It specifically mentions that if you want to go from sorcerer to something else, um, good luck, basically. Because that's your blood. Yeah, fair enough. And then it gives a suggestion of, like, well, magical blood fusion. I guess. Kind of deal. Uh, uh, but... Just drink Kaz's blood. Become a sorcerer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Look, fan. If I... That's I'm what you need so to do as Paul. You disappointed need to his blood, in, drink it, and get a third. It's like, <laughs> like, I'm so disappointed in Joe for having so much restraint. Because if I was given a vial of someone's blood that would make me like merge their mind temporarily, I would drink that shit immediately. I'll, I'll give you some of Cell's characters. No, blood. he's too cursed. <laughs> I'm gonna curse him so hard in that game because he's basically asking. Uh, I, I made the joke that uh, he should have the wild magic roll on Cantrip as well. Oh. He's like, whoa, whoa, you don't want, you want to kill me, don't you? It's like, what? You agreed to this I want like him a to while die. ago. And it's kind of like, what? I, I think I misunderstood what you were talking about. So it's like, all right, fine. We'll do something else. So instead of uh, wild magicing on every time you use any magic spell except for ritual spells, I'm making it so it's on... Ones and twenties. Oh god! Because because uh, he made a macro to roll the, on the wild magic surge table, and his first roll was a crit, so it mm. rolled two d one hundreds. And I was like, hmm, that's interesting. What if uh, you if you roll a twenty, you can pick between the two effects that you roll. <laughs> My god! <laughs> so, Dude, I he's gonna die session one. I also I also told him. Um, that if he wanted to do something to become like more stable and like switch his bloodline, 
later on because of story events, mm -hmm. you can do that. And he's like, no, I want to embrace the chaos. It's like, all right, I'll embrace the chaos too. So what I'm getting is I'm going to hate this character. Um, only if they wild magic surge all the time, which I don't think will happen. I normally hate chaos um, if it's not a one shot. Um, I despise wild magic so much. I, the, the wild magic is just like, I don't find it super interesting as something you play physically. Like, if, if I was watching someone play a game and they were a wild magic sorcerer, and, like, it was, like, a really good DM and they kind of, like, mm -hmm. made it, like, part of the story, kind of, made, like, make it, yeah. made it part of, the, like, the game story, like, the world and stuff. Mm -hmm. Or in a book where you use it literally as a plot device, because in a book, you just, like, you don't roll and figure things out. You're just like, yeah. oh, I want this weird thing to happen, and you just write it in the story. Mm -hmm. Like, in those cases, I think it's fine but like you just having random stuff happen it'd be like rolling um like always with advantage and then uh if you like nat one like some weird crazy stuff happens on your fighter it's mm -hmm. like that's just kind of weird yeah okay. but that's I what they want to play so still i'm anticipating uh the most controlled chaos that i have given people because i'm not probably gonna go farther than that the uh wand uh the rod of wonder I am terrified. Well, mostly, it doesn't really affect me. Mm -hmm. I, I will give a cursed version of that to, to Cell, so that he can be a wild magic sorcerer <laughs> with uh, the Wad of, Rod of Wonder. For... You're giving him too much power. No, I'm giving him the ability to kill himself and play a weird uh, lizard folk who grabs people. Alright, fair enough. <laughs> because if he <laughs> dies, he's playing a lizard <laughs> folk that grabs people. <laughs> Um, uh, I, I, you, oh, know, yeah. uh, you know, never. You, you need heavy rain falls for one round a sixty foot radius on the rod's wielder. <laughs> I really like um, how tame, honestly, how tame the Pathfinder one is. It's just weird stuff. I mean, like, the, <laughs> I mean, I'm gonna look up the DMG now. The, the five, the five V one is, is so much weirder. <laughs> uh, yeah, here we go. Items that's on like page of I mean, I, I do like that. Um, if you roll a, a 34 between between 34 and 36, you either summon a rhino, an elephant, or a mouse. <laughs> uh, Wand of Wonder, here we go with 5e yeah. version. Uh, you cast um, slow, you cast fairy fire, you are stunned until the start of your next turn, believing something awesome happened. Mm -hmm. You cast gust of wind, uh, you cast detect thoughts on the target you choose. If you didn't target a creature, you instead take 1d6 psychic damage. Ooh. Nice. Uh, there's the heavy rain, stinking cloud. Oh, oh. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna meme this one so hard. If he if Cell gets a, a wand of wonder and he rolls the 34 to 36, <clears throat> it says an animal appears in unoccupied space nearest to the target. The animal isn't under your control and acts as it normally would. Roll a d100 to determine what animal appears. I'm not gonna roll. It's saying a rhinoceros, an elephant, or a rat. I'm gonna have a unicorn appear oh, God. and then uh, use a horn attack and spear either him <laughs> or the creature he's targeting for memes because of his weird cursed uh, uh, or orc. Or Yeah, or orc man. <laughs> so nice. I, uh, 100%, I'm sorry, but you're gonna find a wand, a wand of wonder in my game. So spoilers. Mm -hmm. Fun. And, have and a if, weird babe person show up and hand it to the party. I'll have a I'll have a, a <clears throat> evil crazy uh, cursed warlock uh, kobold who has the wand of wonder and fight you guys and you can <clears throat> steal it from his corpse. Oh no! Or um, if you just steal it from his unconscious body because I don't know if you guys are gonna be murdering <clears throat> in that game or not. Yeah. And then here's the generic ability. A cloud of 600 oversized <laughs> butterflies yep. fill a 30-foot radius centered on the target. <clears throat> it becomes heavily obscured, and the butterflies remain for 10 minutes. Yep. Anyway, do we have any other games this week? I don't no. think we do. Uh, oh, hey, uh, I still like 96 to 97. Wielder or target per turns permanently blue, green, or purple. No save. <laughs> oh, there's even more. I only saw it on the top of the page. I didn't even scroll down. <laughs> Oh, here it is. You cast Fireball. 70 yep. to 79. Perfect. Yep. It's pretty It's pretty similar. I think they, they didn't change It's much. mostly the same. There's a couple of changes, I think, that are more fun. Yeah. But anyway, that's Rod of Wonder. Oh, 
the 98 to 100 as you become the creature. Yep. That's interesting. All right. I thought that was a good uh, session. We went a little long. Mm -hmm. I've got some stuff to do before uh, Adventures later on tonight, because we're doing some stuff. Yeah, we have one hour. No, we have two hours. I was looking at it. I looked for three hours. It's 2 p.m., not 3 p.m. Yes. This is what happens when you bring me on to talk about it. It runs long. It was fine. It was it's fun and exciting. We got we talked uh, some good stuff about our topic. So, thank you everyone who joined us today for this uh, mm -hmm. Sunday special spectacular. It was just you know a busy and I could reschedule. Extra long Sunday special. Yeah, yeah. It wasn't really that special. It's just rescheduling. Uh, <laughs> just fine. No, it's special because I'm here. That's yeah. true. True. We do make it special. Um, should be back. Uh, for if you're looking for more role-playing content, Wednesday and Thursday should be on schedule this week, both 9 p.m. EST. Should be back to a normal schedule for discussing table of not next Saturday, and I'll be doing probably some gaming streams throughout the morning, finishing up Final Fantasy 12 and um, doing a little bit more Pathfinder Wrath Righteous. Haven't gotten fed up with it enough yet to stop. Maybe because I only play it once a week. And you can't find me anywhere unless I return to the Wednesday game for like one or two sessions to be a weird demon monster. Because oh, literally, yeah. I, I'll, I'll be a weird demon monster because it's like level nine. I think we redid the feat because there's a feat. There's a it's a third party feat that tieflings get wings. Um, but I think you got it at seven, but the Asmer one is nine. Mm -hmm. And you're like, I'm okay with this feat because it's basically the Asmer one, but we'll make it the Asmer level. And I'm like, totally fine with that. Yeah. Um, so I'll, I won't have tiny wings. Uh, I'll have big wings, and I can fly. So hell yeah. Putting ranks and fly from level one. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What will matter? Or mm -hmm. maybe I didn't, and I was just going to dump a ton into fly or something. I don't remember what it was. You get, like, poor maneuverability. You're, yeah. You fly like crap. <laughs> uh, yeah. All right, and that's, uh, I think that's it then. So, uh, sh as I said, should be back uh, for stuff probably tomorrow and the rest of the week, and I'll put a schedule up when I figure out if there's anything special going on. So anyway, bye for now, everybody. Farewell, Goodbye. everybody. Bye.